It's an alien invasion. That's pretty hip-hop dancing. Yes, I think that's right. That's pretty much the beat of Alien Invasion. Sure. Congratulations. I listened to it earlier purposely to be like, I will remember what this song sounds like. And guess what? I didn't. I forgot this is a segment that we open every podcast with, so I didn't think about trying to remember any of the songs. Any of the songs. Perfect. Happy New Year, Molly. Happy New Year, Adam and RJ. How did you celebrate the new year? We rung in the new year in scenic uh, Clive, Iowa, with mm. a friend of the show, season one, uh, Miranda. We were there uh, to ring in the new year with her, and... That's it. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Um, I mean, it's, it's fun. It's, it was just like a little, it wasn't even a house party. It was a house. We were there. Yeah. We were at a, a house. And, dinner party at midnight. Kind yes. of yeah. And uh, our friend from college, Ma- Megan, since mm. uh, uh, Minneapolis is famously two, two three-ish hours away. Also, yes. an easier drive than our drive because ours was like five. Mm-hmm. Um, so she went down too because she was like, sure, why not? I don't have any plans. Um, Lovely. And her car broke down on the way. So Jay said to Jay said to grab on 35. Infamous yeah. I-35. So she you know had, it, you'll know it. it. Yeah. yeah. So she she had to be saved. Um and then but it was fun. It was fun. It was the most I've spent time with Megan. <laughs> Probably since Ever. college. Since, sure. college. since college. It's been a, yeah. it's been a long time. So that was like, oh, this is fun. She's still like the same, the same gal. But like, mm. um, you know, with with more she's turning 30 which is crazy though like oh yeah i guess and we are the underclassmen are also that, getting older now too so, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah but no it was fun it was fun catching up with her how about you how was the fam how was the cabin great right? yeah we only lost power for like three hours one morning okay during that That's crazy storm so could have been a lot worse mm-hmm. um we didn't have internet though the whole time which was unfortunate but did it feel All like a break? Did good. you feel like, oh, I can it unplug? Did. Yes. Very yeah. different, you know, environment in all ways to go from San Diego to northern Wisconsin in the middle of a snowstorm. <laughs> um, and so you were yeah, like, they... I don't even own sweaters anymore. I just threw them all away. Them all no, away. I did actually. I left the sweaters <laughs> at the cabin anticipating oh, exactly this smart. thing. Yeah. Smart, smart. Um, so yeah, that was great. And I flew home on New Year's Eve. So I went to bed oh. at 8 30 p.m wow i had woken up early and been on a plane all day mm. didn't even make eastern year. time new year's i <laughs> i set a resolution that i was going to try to make eastern time and then at about eight was like that's not happening y'all so i am done yeah i was done um what's wild is is that chicago is the third largest city in the country famously and mm-hmm. the reason i feel okay leaving every year and not spending it in chicago is because chicago doesn't fucking do anything for new years there's like no festivities here mm-hmm. there's is not there, like though, a city that has like a everyone's doing this thing on new year like doesn't everyone just go to like a new... bar yeah besides like um besides new well, york new so Orleans on the had... yeah when we watched uh dick clark's new year's rockin eve hosted by ryan seacrest <laughs> they had um the central Adam's straight voice yeah the central time party was at nolan's yeah uh-huh so, but so, that's just like everybody out in french quarter just celebrating yeah but that's yeah. still i guess i just feel like yeah i guess it's, it's like, like cold? distinctive yeah I, I think, think that people go to bars in Chicago and that's sure, basically yes. what everyone's doing. Everywhere. I think that's what most people do around the world in general. It's just weird that there's not a th- anything. There's not like a one, not there's like one thing that everyone goes to, but like there's something. Yeah. It's weird that there's just mm-hmm. nothing. Cause Chicago, I feel like goes out for Christmas. I feel like Chicago goes pretty hard. Out for Christmas. where? Christmas to, is in your house. To the beat. Chris Kindle market. <laughs> eat, eat. Let's go get away. <laughs> um, my, yeah. my thought is we should, um, Every New Year, we should uh, at at midnight throw the bean into Lake Michigan. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. That seems hard. 
Yeah, but I mean, it's 2023. We can do anything. Or like drop the bean. Sure. The bean drop. Drop it. Can we say Mm. this? Because God forbid this episode is going to come out. Something happens. And something happens. So let's say it now. While we are recording, there is no No. speaker of the house. (laughs) There's no house of representatives. On the time of recording. Logging in. Yeah. Logging in. I thought you were going to ask me just like how my day was. And I was going to say it's better than Kevin McCarthy's day. That's for sure. (laughs) I hate to say something absolutely crazy. But I don't know if you noticed that in our Top Hat episode, we make a reference to Twitch. The, oh, yes. The I dancer. Know. The dancer from Ellen. Unfortunately passed away. Passed. I know. Um, we really, I mean, we it's kept that insane curse because I think it was like two days, days after we recorded is like when. Oh, so now are you worried because we're talking about how Kevin McCarthy is having a bad time. He's going to start having a good time. <laughs> I don't want him to have a good time. We love Kevin. Oh my we, God. We, what, we stand we're, rooting for, we're all rooting for Kevin. We're rooting Kevin. for Kevin. Stay, <laughs> we're with, stay we're in rooting the race, for Marjorie man. Taylor Greene. We're rooting going. for Matt Gates. Oh, Absolutely. yes. We're no rooting for Dan Crenshaw. We're rooting for, we're rooting for all of them at the same time. All of it. Yeah. We love yeah. it. No Congress. I'm, I'm all for it. No Congress. Yeah. We don't need well, it. Well, there's a Senate, so. <laughs> exactly. Who needs a Congress? Who they deal with this anyway? Yeah. Um, we all just need a break. You know, we need to work on ourselves. We need some time away. We need no to Congress yeah, for we, a while. We need to work on ourselves for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I saw someone. America. 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 I saw some. I saw a politician. It's Mary to told the 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 congressperson from Alaska. Do you know what I'm talking about? The oh, one yes. representative. I don't remember her last name is, but uh, yes, per, Pertolta. I think is what her name is. Anyway, she tweeted this meme that was like me me at the first speaker of the house vote me at the seventh speaker of the house vote and it's like that like photo of mr incredible and then like he's like fully washed out and they grayscale yeah it looks weird. yeah and then somebody commented and it's funny right it's just like an observation it's, funny. it's, it's just a meme it's objectively the entire situation is funny and well you know how like normal people handle politicians trying to attempt humor really normally Yes. And instead of like, if you don't like the joke, instead of just ignoring it and being like, that was a dumb joke, you they feel like they have to be like, well, actually. <laughs> so um, in, in 1855, I, I'm going to teach you some history. In 1855, there were 133 votes for Speaker of the House and it lasted two I knew months. that, but yes, continue. I, I mean you, the royal you, as in you and all of us. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Yeah. And someone had the audacity to be like, it's only been two days. I think you can suck it up. We one time had to wait two months. And I was like, who is we? Who is we had to wait two months? You didn't have to. The last, <laughs> even the last time we didn't have Speaker of the House vote on the first time was a hundred years ago. Like, no Back one's in alive. My day, Back in when my we day. were arguing about slavery and that was the biggest <laughs> issue, we knew how to shut up and deal with it when it took two months to elect Speaker of the House. Okay, so grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, the whole internet needs to be set into a dumpster fire. Anyway, catch me on they TikTok. They all need to calm down. They need a break from Congress. This is what I'm saying. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Congress needs a break. Give some time to cool off, you know? Yeah. That's anyway, let's funny. talk about zombies. That's funny that you make that joke. We're going to return to Molly's comment later Ooh. when I talk about criticism of this movie. That's very okay. funny. Taking a break? Yes. That exact turn of phrase, in fact. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Molly, this week you have a uh, challenge, and since you Ooh. clearly refuse to believe that any of these challenges could ever be hard, we gave you the easiest plot to summarize. I I don't know. I don't know about this one, but I'm going to try my best, because I, okay. I want to give everyone the character names that we're going to need to reference. That's going to be 45 to seconds alone. Movie. Oh, that's so, huge. That's huge. Keep in mind, everyone, that this is the third movie in a sequence. And we have not seen any of the other ones. And we're not talking about the other and two. And we're not, we're not talking about Not interested stuff. in them? No. Not relevant. Okay. Um, <laughs> was, you know how the third one is just sits alone. That's how that's Yeah, how yeah, yeah. Stand alone. The, yeah. the third stands alone. That's I the, love that's just, say about just going to Lord of the Rings Return of the King <laughs> and knowing nothing going into it. Uh-huh. Um, okay, Molly, this is your one-minute summary challenge for Zombies 3. And your time starts now. Zombie Ned... Nope, I already put it wrong. Okay. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> Zombie Ned. <laughs> Ned. Okay, count me off. Count me off. Molly, this is your second attempt at a one minute <laughs> challenge, and your time starts Zow. Zombie Zed Necrodopolis. <laughs> 
pressured to win his upcoming football game so he can win a scholarship to Mountain College, becoming the first monster accepted into a higher educational institution and joining his girlfriend, human cheerleader, Addison. The game is interrupted by an invasion of telepathic, non-hierarchical, and emotion-suppressed aliens who are searching for a map to their utopia. A video message from the alien scout tells them the map is hidden in the town, Seabrook's most precious thing. Aliens, led by Alan, Aspen, and Allie, obscure their purpose by saying they have come to join Addison's cheer competition and try to learn about the town, what the town holds precious by turning on their emotions and engaging in competition for the first time. Aspen falls for Zed and then later for Willa, the leader of the werewolves who also live in Seabrook. With the support of the whole town, Zed manages to win an exceptional student scholarship. Addison discovers her grandmother is the alien scout and that the map to the utopia is embedded in Addison's DNA. The map is dynamic, meaning Addison must accompany the aliens to utopia, leading to tearful goodbyes. But in discussing utopia, Addison points out that conflict is not inherently bad. Challenge can make us better leading the aliens to realize that Seabrook is their utopia. They all return to Earth to graduate together and break down barriers at Mountain College. Wow. And that was over a minute. I wasn't paying attention in the time, but you, I... You were like if... 12 seconds over. Okay, okay. Okay. Could be worse. Worth it, I think, though. Yes, I mean, yeah. probably a little more detail in the conclusion than I needed, but I just you felt like... You probably didn't need telepathic, non-hierarchical, and emotion suppressed. <laughs> no, but it is important to understanding the arc of the fact of the that aliens, what yeah. is in, what the aliens learn in the course of the plot mm. is that while they believed their point not a having point emotions B. and not being hierarchical sure. was better they uh -huh. point out that the yeah. reason that they lost their original planet okay. is because mm -hmm. no one was willing to oh. cause conflict with uh -huh. disharmony really? and they need to learn the value oh. of conflict <laughs> for the know. movie to resolve and i think it's a really <laughs> interesting message for a children's film so i thought it was important to include in full uh one could say this is a progressive film Mm. In many ways. In, In many, many ways. ways. Now, I am interested to know your relationship to this musical, but I feel like you so enjoyed Jingle Jangle that mm. I'm hoping you're going to tell us that you watched Zombies 3 with, also with your family. I did not. Oh. Because it's a, whole, it's a whole movie and we didn't plan it. We didn't plan it in time for it to be Friday movie night. And so mm. like the other nights of the week is like homework nephew had basketball practice yesterday so like it would be 90 minutes is too much for the family to commit on the fly yeah, um definitely. but i did learn that my older nephew has watched the movie before oh he has seen zombies two and three but so not he's, one he's the subject matter expert more he's than, the subject more matter than expert <laughs> and when i asked him what he thought he wasn't sure and we said well what would you how would you describe it to somebody who hadn't seen it and he would he said surprising because if you haven't seen a movie before you don't know what's going to happen and that he wow. wished that he had seen the first one. Oh. So he's kind of a completionist at heart, I think. And sure, he wants sure. to he wants to have the full context of the story, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I said, you know, if your friend came up to you and you said, should I watch Zombies 3? You can't just walk into Halloween Town 2. Exactly. How would you know? How would you know? And how, and it's, it's really, it's the same. So if a friend walked up to you and said, well. should I, should I watch Zombies 3? He said, it's not really good or bad. It's in the middle. Oh. Okay. So I said, uh -huh. I said did you yeah. like the songs? And he said, yes. And okay. I said, did you think the people in the movie did a good job? And he said, yes. And okay. I said, did you think that the story was entertaining? And he said, yes. Oh. So neutral review, but positive on, on, all, all, fronts. on okay. all fronts. That's, okay. that's the seven-year-old opinion. I mean, it's, it's easy. Sometimes you have that, though, where you're like, you know, I loved the acting. I loved the costumes. I liked the story. Did I think it all worked together? Maybe not. Maybe it was just right. So it was I get the it. synergy wasn't there. Sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Ma but Molly, what is your relationship to the music school? Is it oh, just I that never conversation? Seen it. <laughs> it was that conversation, but that conversation <laughs> happened after watching it. I did watch oh, it by okay, myself okay, okay. this afternoon. Um, oh, this afternoon? Never seen it before. A matinee? Wow. A matinee. A matinee, a matinee <laughs> performance. I've been hooked on the speaker drama, so I kind of waited to the last minute to watch it. <laughs> um, and I have to say I was disappointed in the sense that I assumed this would be bad and this would be a fun episode of us dunking on this movie and it was good. So <laughs> it's not going to oh. be one of those episodes. Oh! <laughs> so that's my mini review. Great! <laughs> but we're uh, going to have some Adam Molly conflict in the classic showcase <laughs> manner, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> what what, what's a real what's showcase, showcase episode if it's mm. not just us screaming at each other? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I have no... I literally... I had to have like heard of it through osmosis, I guess. 
because like the first one you didn't comes have out- to because i certainly had not well the first one came out in 2018 and the second one came out in 2020 oh. so i feel like i would have so just heard... by working at disney heard someone Z- mention the word zombies. zombie at any point but yeah. i really don't think i ever had I think I knew the third one came out because I had been on Disney Plus and like seen the like title <laughs> card of the icon. So I, I think would... also it might be that you didn't hear about it because just calling a film zombie is kind of it's uh, it's that... not yeah it's it's creating a situation in which someone could have mentioned it and you didn't realize it was like a new film right like it's such a general term yeah I was actually trying to find some info on the first movie because I was trying to figure out what the what Zed's last name was mm-hmm. but when I tried to just put in zombie then of course like a bunch of other stuff came up so it's not really SEO yeah. so wait, well what's hard what's hard about the title is technically the title is Z O M B I E S because what's the joke they're cheerleaders they're cheerleaders. Um, yeah cheer classic so that's that's why i'm sure well i just mean when diluted to a seo keyword it's like okay one in one of one of or in conversation or in conversation one's not gonna spell the whole thing sure i more but i think for today's episode we should try it (laughs) every time we say the word oh okay okay. Okay. um i just mean more that like in 2018 and 2020 rj and i famously had a disney podcast we did so it's kind of surprising that we didn't see it however uh, it was, I mean, this was pre Disney Plus. This was Disney Channel, and we didn't have Disney Channel. We did not have time. cable, but we did a Descendants episode because they, we were able to see it somehow. I don't remember how. I think, I think Descendants they, was also earlier. I think it was like it was Hulu, or like it was like ABC Family. There was something where we were. It was accessible when it first came out. Yeah, Descendants was out in like 2015. I want to say because when I moved back to Minnesota, I had a job where I would like go to different community centers to teach like a one week musical theater class for kids Cute. in the summer. And Descendants was one of the like themes of the, the camp theme. because it was okay. really big. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I want to say it was either like a, it, it was po- Here's what I will say. Here's what I will say. Zomb- Descendants and zombies. D-O-M-B-A-S. Descendants had a way bigger like cultural impact within the like Disney. Because it was taking lore. It's like probably that probably that might make sense. That's probably doing the wicked thing that Adam that I love. I love that ruined media. Yeah, you know what doesn't do that? This movie. Um. Mm. So anyway, I didn't know anything about Zombies Three. Um. And I think it's very funny that we're just watching the third one. And we will we will hold firm to this day. Right now, we agree that we will never review Zombies One and Two. I never want to see. I I want the joke to be that we did Zombies Three and then we never talked about One and Two. Yeah. I. Can't commit that I won't watch them because sure, okay, my okay, nephew sure. does now want to watch Zombies one, but yeah. I will not review it on this podcast that oh, I'm yeah. fine with. No, yeah. that's a promise I can make. Yeah, RJ, are you similar Unlike to Kevin me? McCarthy? Or <laughs> um, we're nope. just gonna keep changing his job every time we bring him up. Like current Speaker of the House, <laughs> oh. maybe he's not Speaker of the House. Maybe he's now a vacuum repair person. I don't know what his job is anymore. Mm. Maybe he's just like over yeah, it. Yeah. And he quits. Yeah. I also did not have a relationship really with Zio and BIS uh, in its entirety. The only like reference we had was we did see Descendants. We did it for the D-Pod. Mm-hmm. We did an episode on it. We were like not big fans. We were mixed. We were mixed. Also we at the time, Kristen we liked Kristen Chenoweth. We liked Kristen Chenoweth. We liked like when it was campy, but we felt like there was too much like it's about them having to redeem themselves and like we weren't truly interested in that we were like more singing more dancing more Kristen. um mm-hmm. so i i think i remembered seeing like there's a new one that's out called zombies z-o-m-b-i-s and it was also a musical situation for the disney channel and i had a bad not a bad taste but just like a questionable taste from descendants that i was like i don't think i'm interested also like not in the demo i don't think um so yeah i don't i feel like you're over explaining why you hadn't watched this disney channel original movie I, in your mid-20s. I, I didn't walk in like furious how you i just this completely one. missed this one. Oh my god yeah no i just was but i think also like there's so much disney like we were surrounded with disney stuff so it was like right. whenever there is a disney thing there are people that are around us it's more weird that we thing. never even encountered it in the parks where they'll just randomly promote what's popular on Whatever's, Disney Channel, yeah. which says to me mm. that it wasn't super popular on Disney Channel, yeah. but then they made two sequels. So I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I think I just always was like, okay, not for me. But then also I have a weird, not weird, but like a fascinating relationship with just like zombies, zombieology, zombie culture, zombie culture. Mm-hmm. So like, 
uh, in college. I was very, I watched like the first two seasons of Walking Dead. I was very like, it's one of those things where I personally was like, I, this actually terrifies me. I'm just not a, you know, I'm a, I'm a wimpy wimpy. Oh, I'm a wimpy you baby. Really fine time. Yeah, I'm a wimpy baby. And I was like, okay, this is kind of scary. Um, That's so interesting because I always feel like zombies are the least scary monster. Yeah, I think for me, like my thing has always been like I hate or it the the like dystopian like the lottery by Flannery O'Connor was all, like read that yeah. too young, so that always terrified gotcha. me. But like when there's like a communal thing of like killing someone, and like zombies is the like you know like supernatural version of that, where it's like oh. everyone is just like mindlessly the wanting to coming collecting. for you. Hive mind. Hive mind. Hive mind. Like, like mind. super scared at that. Yeah. So oh, that's I, very that's yeah. very nuanced, actually. I would yeah, say yeah. I would say probably most people like the gen general fear. What's actually people are scared of what what zombies represent to like the the cute the your lizard brain being scared of something is like it's either the idea of like people can eating. like i don't even think it's like the eating brains thing because you really never see people do that in zombie stuff i feel like it's really just like the idea of changing to an extent that you're like unrecognized like yeah it's, like, you're like not human. morphing into like yeah. a, another see, thing i okay this is we're way off relationship but i don't care um <laughs> yeah, right. i did research in anticipation of the episode on zombies and then watched the movie and was like well dang this is about aliens so i this is not gonna be relevant <laughs> but i will tell you that so according i watched to six episodes of unsolved mysteries and i'm ready to talk <laughs> right it's okay <laughs> a couple <laughs> that a couple of different there are a couple of different articles about the history of zombies all mm. obviously related to to haiti and the voodoo tradition but mm. like the question of where does that come from there were different accounts and the different articles i read one from the atlantic one from npr so both good sources i'm sure it's just that like we're not totally sure yeah. so like one theory was that it was a part of the lore of enslaved people in haiti that if you committed suicide that your soul could not return to africa and so oh. a zombie is the idea of like sort of an unrested soul oh, and another wow. another version is like that it exemplifies exactly like the greatest fear of the people doing the enslaving of like the the history of haiti coming back and like like mm. the sort of the ghost of slavery coming back mm -hmm. to get you because there's apparently like one of the first kind of accounts we have written about zombies is of like a white i think french colonizer like recounting what the religion of haiti is right mm -hmm. so there's all these different ideas of like that as a zombie is like just a body coming back yes. without a soul basically and like where where does that like what's the root fear maybe that that's coming Ooh, from yeah, but yeah. i've always felt like it like within my lifetime zombie movies have functioned mostly to like have an evil that you can just like kill without feeling bad about it yes Ooh, like to true. me zombie movies feel like they fall more into an action um sort of yeah. like it's like, sla like e often. yeah like e uh ash versus evil dead like they're just like well it's yes like also comedy but like i think of like world war z as like yes. uh i am right legend. it's just like the thing is the thing is like what would we do to unite and deal with a problem together it turns mm. out the answer is nothing we would fall apart yeah. but um you know before the pandemic i thought maybe we would as a as a you know world come sure, together sure, and sure. deal with the problem um <laughs> no more so, no more uh, that's often how i've like that's my first association always with zombies it's just mm -hmm. as like it's a it like looks like a person but it's not a person so like no problem if you want to just have a whole scene that's just like someone machine gunning them down yeah, you know? yeah. Like, i think that's not i think that was villain. one yeah. of the things that like worked like why the walking dead worked is because it really grappled with the idea of like the human people that you yeah. love turning into zombies yes. and then having to kill that them. and always, i think yeah, that's, that's why like i watched walking dead with the like i'm i'm so scared because like adam watching emotional shows like i get emotional because it's Trauma. like you see a zombie eat a person and if they're still alive then they now are a zombie and yeah and they're not right. the person that yeah. you see that transformation and it's like i don't i, uh, I don't want to deal with it it was also fascinating to read the atlantic article i read was in 2015 and they were talking about like one of the fears in zombies being a pandemic and it's like mm. such a such, such a, a like, cute oh my god so abstract cute. idea to <laughs> yeah could you imagine yeah, hypothetically a yeah. Yeah. imagine like, what a world if there was, like a worldwide pandemic like i mean that wouldn't happen but like let's but, let's like, pretend crazy yeah. but i after like i vividly remember the summer i came back f after freshman year i was back home in phoenix and i had nothing to do for three months for the whole summer and i kept having zombie nightmares like full dreams of me oh. like running away from zombies or like having to like whatever 
and uh i had to like look up like what people like interpreted that dream as and it's like feeling like you can't like be your own person or like feeling trapped in a situation and i was like oh, oh it's because i had a full year in college fully independent now i'm back in phoenix oh. and i had like nothing oh. to do and i was like i'm just sitting here at home sure and i yeah and I, you had seen the walking dead and i had seen the walking dead yeah so it was a very and like at the time i was dating someone and that that lived in chicago so i was like i i will never i i feel so like just taken <laughs> mm. so that's why zombies and i are um I think I'm feeling better. I think seeing this movie helped me kind of get through some of that. Uh, I mean, it's pretty light on the zombies, let's be <laughs> honest. But I'm glad that this was a first step in healing for you. I would you, say it's you, definitely less horror, more comedy. I would say that for sure. Yeah. yeah. I think I I should, I felt like this was a way for me to like open up to more of those like comedy horror stuff where it's like, okay, I'm just focusing on the comedy, the campness. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't focus on the like, yeah, like the the terror that like of killing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, this where now, listeners, we have to be honest. We have to tell you our truth is that we did not pick zombies three out of thin air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were requested from mm -hmm. a listener, much like our Camelot episode. We were requested from a listener to watch Zombies Three. Yes, and they also sent in their their relationship. So, mm -hmm. Archie, did you want to read that? Yes. So this was uh, sent as a request from Emily. Listener of the show, she also was the graphic designer behind the Impulverse branding. So, uh, at Emily, at Emily, who you, did you not make that clear, job. Emily, who you met at Lollapalooza. Yes, me and my Lollapalooza friend Emily. Yes, yeah. Love so, the graphic design vision for Impulverse, Emily. <laughs> yes, she was very. Uh, she was great. She was an awesome collaborator and very talented artist. Anyway, she like DM'd me one like last year and was like okay crazy idea but if you guys watch zombies three for showgaze that'll be awesome and so you know we put it in our list we prepared for it and then i asked her like what is your relationship to zombies three how did you get to zombies three and she recounts that she went to an event called the zombies bash at disney springs which this is the like recreational mall area at walt disney world and she said that she went because matt cornett the one the actor who plays the guy alien alan. <laughs> alan alan and he's also a current cast member in high school musical the musical the series so like okay had, had a little so bit he of knows fun. olivia rodrigo yes yes they, they, they were kissed multiple times. they were they were they were a couple in the first season yes um wow. and pierce the actor named pierce i forgot his last name but he is the the wolf the boy wolf pierce joseph hair. boy wolf okay um so they were they were going to perform there so they who plays wyatt Yes. So so she went, she went with this at this party, she went with two friends who were full zombie heads, which I guess is the terminology uh, of zombies fans. And she wanted to see it because Matt was there and she loved him from High School Musical. And she said that it was the most fun that she'd ever had at a, like a bash. And the music wow. slapped. She was Absolutely. she was she was drawn in by the music. Mm, and so she was hooked right Emily and I are vibing on this. Yeah. <laughs> so we she spent four hours there at that party and uh, oh she spent four hours there and then she watched yeah, like every show of this party and then watched watched the movies because of it. She even said that she barricade like in a concert, she barricaded the last show and then said, Fuck the kids, they had their chance and got a selfie with Matt. She actually sent us a picture of her selfies. <gasps> Please show me. Um I wanna see. Yeah. And she chat, was too shy. Put it in the and chat. And she said she was too shy to get it with uh, Wyatt the Wolf Boy because he was nineteen. <laughs> she was like, I don't feel, <laughs> I don't feel appropriate. Because Emily is like our age. She is. She's like twenty six. Yeah, twenty six probably. Okay, gotcha. Okay. And go. but Matt is Matt is older. This is definitely when they recorded that Epcot thing. Yeah, I will forward it to you on my phone. But that is uh, that is her story. Twenty four. He's twenty four. Okay. Well, he's currently 24. I don't know when. Matt, he's... Matt Cornett. Yeah. Pierce Joza is the wolf. Yeah. Mm, it's, Google is not immediately giving me a birth date. Oh, he's 20. Okay. Yeah. That wouldn't stop me. So I think this was for the release of Zombies 3. So for a selfie, that wouldn't stop me. It's a selfie. Who cares? I think I think that the age matters in terms of how aggressive you would be of trying to get it, right? That's true. Sure. If yeah, it was yeah, yeah. like I think a, it's if... fine to take a picture with a person who is 20, but yeah. but in terms of trying to like I don't get think through a line I think like, 20 I year olds should be not seen nor heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this and also to be clear, this event was to promote Zombies 3. 
because she there's there were like pictures everywhere of, of the it's alien. like the awful thing because you it's an iphone video and you send it to me on android and so it comes in as this tiny pixelated mess but oh. <laughs> but i sent you some selfies there too but they're having such a good time and i love this yes a dance party um and I mean, the I guess feel, that, the feel of the moment is conveyed even through the tiny video. That is cool. I mean, like, I guess that was a a cool part about, you know, Walt Disney World, if cool stuff like this happened mm. pretty frequently. A part of living close to Disney is that seeing yeah. things like, with the zomb heads. Zombie heads, yes. I mean, clearly this is like, it had a cult following if they had this whole big Dude. bash. Yeah. So, And the third one was highly anticipated, so. Right. Oh, yeah. sorry. Z O. M B I E S yes heads yeah sure great I really don't like spelling out loud this is like a thing for me actually that I oh, get that, nervous is that your zombie about. communal that's my zombie it's <laughs> is spelling spelling out loud and doing math in my head those two those two are my zombies my personal zombies <laughs> three times eight oh cute this is such a cute picture yeah he is Love a cutie okay. Alan the alien is is very, is very cute so okay so let's talk about the history of this piece. I'm gonna. Keep, I'm gonna Wait, refer to... did you tell us anything about your history with zombies? I did. Adam? I went before RJ, <laughs> and I went on a long diatribe about how we didn't know anything about. Oh yeah, zombies. it's been a long time since. That. <laughs> it's been a long time. Sorry. Just... <sighs> <sighs> we got a little bit off track. <laughs> She's back I to really, that I California sun. It's it's <laughs> it's vaping her head. You're supposed to be keeping us in line and you're not doing I it <laughs> <laughs> um okay let's talk about the history of zombies so i will i am go i made a joke but i am going to tell you a quick a quick synopsis of one and two quick oh of one and two i thought you were gonna say of the movie like mine was no, insufficient no, 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 no. and i was deeply zombies Z O M B I E S came out in 2018 the story is, is that the local power plant in, what is it, Seabrook? Seabrook, Seabrook. exploded 50 years ago, turning half the population into zombies. Now, I, oh! now, this is what I think is interesting. This is turning the normal zombie lore, which is that they're undead. They're dead, but they're not dead. And this is just like, oh, mutation. they just turned it. It's like, like yeah, yeah. it's an illness. It's Mutants. a sickness. It's a... I did have the question of like, why are there zombie children? Like, mm -hmm. are they procreating? Right. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Z-bands, which feature heavily in this film, were created to quell their urge for human brains. Addison and Zed start dating much to the dismay of everyone because we're still, they all go to high school together. That's allowed, but we can't, you know, we hit, keep, we're, we're not frat, or fraternized. This is all obviously like a segregation metaphor. Yes. Okay. Correct. Very good. Bucky, who is <laughs> big brain on that one. <laughs> probably the big zombie brain. Uh, Bucky uh, hacks the Addison's Z band. Un unpopular cousin. I'm learning. I learned yes. from three, right? Cousins. Yeah. Yes, correct. They're cousins. cousins. That's why he was like, do it at the end of the movie. He's like, oh, am I an alien too? And then they're like, no. Mm. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Bucky hacks the Z-band to turn the zombies into full monsters, frightening everyone. Mm. Uh, I'm skipping a lot of the plot, by the way. <laughs> at the big game, I put that in quotes, Addison reveals her white hair under the blonde wig that she's been wearing the whole film, <laughs> showing that she has to hide even this aspect of herself because the regular people are so unaccepting of others, leading everyone to confront their own bias. Okay, so if we just wow. watched the first one, it's fully like, oh, you, you it's have hairspray. You have hair. <sighs> well, no, but I was watching this one being like, I wonder how much foreshadowing there's been that she like kind of doesn't fit in and like this yeah. hair being a thing. And so the fact that it actually is in the first movie the major is like, plot I'm point of the first genuinely movie. pretty impressed. Yeah. They've been sowing the seeds. Yes. Yeah. They've reaped what they've sown. Yeah. For sure. They've reaped what zombie, they've sown. Zombie Jake Happer accidentally today said, <laughs> sowed what you reaped. And then I had like a whole moment of like, what would that be though? <laughs> like just replanting stuff that you had already planted. Anyway. <laughs> C O M B I E S two. Uh, werewolves are discovered in the wolf in the woods outside of town, leading the mayor to re-implement the anti-monster laws again, which means mm. Zed cannot go to prawn with Addison because they call it prawn, not prawn, because they're it's a shrimp as their mascot, so they call it. Yeah, prawn. they're like Seabrook, and they're the shrimps. Yes, so that's like a yeah. shrimp yeah. industry. What's Seabrook? Okay. The city. No, Just no, no. the sea. Oh, just it's a reference okay. no, it's, to the I didn't know if Seabrook was also like a brand of shrimpers. I mean, maybe I don't it know. is, but maybe. as far as I know. It's, it's the name of the shrimping boat is the sea. I don't know. Yeah. Um, he decides to run for class president against Bucky in order to be able to go to prawn with her. 
uh, with Addison. Addison then befriends the werewolves, and a prophecy is revealed that they're... Now, are you realizing the theme is that every movie Addison is helping? Mm-hmm. We're she's fostering she's, she's relationships. She's the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she's, Addison befriends she's, the werewolves. She's Tracy, a, yeah. And the prophecy of the werewolves is revealed that there is a girl with white hair called the Great Alpha that will lead them to their beloved Moonstone. This is making me feel uncomfortable. I don't like this. Presumed to be under the soon-to-be-demolished power plant. <gasps> okay. Wow. Um, she's not officially a werewolf, but she does lead. The, they think she's. She, they were like, "You could be a werewolf," because she again, her, the theme is there's she doesn't know. There's something she doesn't know her. who she is. Yeah. She's yeah. not officially a werewolf, but she does lead them to where they where to find it and saves the day. Zed and Addison share their first kiss at the end of the movie. So they or at the end okay. of the second movie. So they don't kiss in the first one. They kiss in the second one. Mm-hmm. Very okay. High School Musical in that way. Very high school do they not kiss in the first one they do not it's true don't they kiss like in that like the very first new year scene or whatever no they famously would never okay. have kissed then oh i'm My so God. sorry <laughs> in an epilogue scene an asteroid falls to the town and addison's white hair begins to glow wow they mm-hmm. knew wow. reaping they really and knew. sewing <laughs> <laughs> okay so okay, that leads us to that leads us to zombis3 it is mm-hmm. written by David Light and Joseph Rasso. It's directed by Paul Hoon. Hoon. It stars Milo Mannheim, Catherine Mannheim's son, as Zed. Presumably it's Milo, right? Milo. I'm going to say Milo. Okay. Um, Meg Donnelly plays Addison. Uh, Trevor Torgman plays Bucky. He's a TikToker. Or no, he was a, I, right? Was that right? I don't know. Oh, I think it was TikTok. Uh, there's two TikTokers in this show. Kylie Russell plays Eliza. She's the one who's on a video screen the whole film because she was, in fact, pregnant during the filming of this movie. Oh, well, congrats to her. Congrats to her. I had to read, double check her age because I was like, that girl was pregnant? <laughs> I think they're all and in And she their was 20s like 24. And I was like, like yeah. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Carla Jeffrey plays Brie, who I think is like the, the friend, the best friend, friend? Cheerleader, cheerleader. Best friend okay. who's date, I believe. dating the zombie. Yep. Um, Ka- Carla Jeffrey. Oh no, I just thought that one. Chandler Kinney. I'm sorry. Chandler Kinney plays Willa. Pierce Joza plays Wyatt. Ariel Martin, who has 32 million followers on TikTok, plays Winter. Wow. Okay. Um, Wait, Terry- which one's Winter? The Winter's football, the, sh- the playing... football werewolf. Werewolf. The girl. The, the girl in the gotcha. football. Team. Okay. Okay. So Willa's the head werewolf, boy werewolf, and football werewolf. Those are yes. the. Those three. Are the three. Gotcha. Famously, the three genders. Um, <laughs> at, now, that's funny that I say that now because Terry Who, a non-binary icon legend moment, Absolutely. plays Aspen, a, a non-binary icon, icon legend, legend moment. Yes. Um, we already said this, but Matt Cornett, who's from High School Musical, the musical series, plays uh, Alan. Alan. Kira Ta- Tantau plays Allie. Kingston Foster plays Zoe who I think is the, the, the young sister. Zed's little sister. Zed's okay. little sister. James Godfrey plays Bonzo, who's the zombie that doesn't speak English, apparently. Mm, okay. Speaks full zombie language, which... Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Famous dialect to zombie. Mm-hmm. And RuPaul <laughs> plays Mothership. Yes. Now, here's what I'm going to say. And again, I'm not talking about this movie yet. Okay. Setting that separately. I did not realize when the title cards were going up. He was, yeah, he was not paying attention. I wasn't really paying attention yet. And I just saw RJ goes, did you see that title card? And I said, yeah, because all I saw was as as mothership. And so I was like, yeah, I saw that there's a character named mothership. I don't know. I'm assuming this is about aliens. (laughs) Did not see who was voicing it. So when the voice starts, I was like, what? And then I was like, you said you read the title card. I didn't. Yeah. I, I didn't. also didn't read the title card. So it took me like a couple lines. Then I was like, wait a second. Wait a second. I know that voice. <laughs> and I was delighted. Silence. <laughs> um, Bring compo- back my girls. <laughs> the composers uh, are George S. Clinton and Amit May Cohen. Uh, the executive producers are David Light, Joseph Rasso, Paul Hone, Susan Farwell, Suzanne. Producer Mary Pantaletis. It was pretty. Was a new rep- uh, representative from the last guy, I believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I believe, yes. Uh, it was shot in Toronto. Toronto. Mm. Cinematography is by Christian Herrera. Editor is Lisa Binkley. Running time is a gorgeous 90 minutes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would like to put a motion to the floor that 90 minutes becomes the calf of how long the movies we watch. Yes. Yeah. We Perfect. all stop at 90 minutes. Yeah. If we don't watch the yeah, rest of the film. You, but you could also start whenever you want. 
that's the, that's the case. Yeah. Ah, or we can fast Whatever forward. Whatever 90 minute chunk you're feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, the production companies are Bloor Street Productions and Resonate Entertainment. Its budget is the highest Disney Channel original movie budget in history at $40 million. I mean, um, not shocked. I'm shocked that Disney puts that money into a Disney Channel movie. Yeah, sure. But I'm not, I think I see it on the screen. Yeah. I see. It's funny because, yes, I agree. I do see it. Yeah. Uh, Disney Plus uh, originally released July 15th, 2022, first on Disney Plus, and then the following month they released it on the Disney oh, Channel. Oh, we're like in the moment. I didn't yeah. realize it was so recent. Yeah. So add this in your, you know, when you're thinking about your Oscar movies for 2000. Right. For yeah. Include this, this. Is, this is in the running. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, th- uh, so this movie was announced that it was going to be made on March 22nd in 2021, which is my birthday, um, <laughs> my 29th birthday. Um, and there's an animated series currently in production to like continue the story. Continue the lore. Because yeah. they don't know gotcha. if they're going to make a fourth one. Um, that's all I got. <laughs> there's, there's no other information about this movie out in the world. And that's Perfect. probably for the best. Yeah. We don't I need think to spend we've given a lot of background this. at this point sure. of, on the movie and not on the movie, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's get into it. Let's let's first, RJ, as, as the surrogate voice for Emily, please mm-hmm. give us her thoughts on Zombies 3. So I asked her, what are you, what's your like overall, you know, note on Zombies 3? And she says that the zombie franch- the zombies franchise itself is America's great trilogy wow. with Zombies 3 as the piece de resistance. Uh, much like, you know, the third Lord of the Rings movie was the one nominated for Best Picture. You know, it's that mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. one only, Best yeah. Picture. Only get be- it won. It won Best Picture. Yeah. Not only is it, in all caps, camp for camp sake, but Zombies mm-hmm. 3 creates a story of belonging, acceptance, and the greatest allegory to overcoming xenophobia of the 21st century. Wow. Milo Zootopia caught dead. <laughs> Milo Mannheim plays Ed in all his six foot four glory and McDonnelly. Wow. <laughs> McDonnelly, Addison, America's rising sugar plum sweetheart. It's, it's a real Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan. Uh, lead an ensemble cast of scene stealers. And she did parenthesize, except for the little sister, have we, had, have we not had enough of child actors? Which. Hostile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, if anything, one should watch this movie solely for the genius writing that is, and then she gave an example of a line, you speak zombie and that's a dead language like Latin. Genius, self-aware, high art that we all needed in 2022. And then she caveated by saying that Milo is one of our finest Nepo babies, who is the son of Cameron Mannheim, not, not Catherine, Catherine. Mm-hmm. Um, star of Boston Public, The Practice. Mm-hmm. Well, now I feel like I'm gonna have to change my closer to who's the who's the greatest Nepo baby. Um, oh, how timely! It's very I much of a zeitgeist. Feel, yes, we're about the Nepo babies right now. Um, yeah, I <laughs> never before like in culture he... has Nepo baby existed. <laughs> well, never before have we wanted to talk about it so much. Um, I feel very strongly that Milo is tall as Timothy Chalamet. Oh, I think Timothy's like five ten. I don't think he's that yeah, tall. Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying Milo is a tall version. Oh, I thought you said I heard Timothee. tall. I th- I heard a tall as tall as Timothy Chalamet. No, no, no. I think he is a tall version of Timothy Chalamet. I, I actually I feel very much like if this was America's Next Top Model, Timothy would be the editorial model, and Milo is the commercial version. Commercial, absolutely. You know what I mean? That is the, the best way to explain that. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. I have one picture in my hand, and that picture represents the two zombie. girls stand before me. <laughs> um, RJ, I want to hear your thoughts. My Your just of... general take on ZOMBIS 3. My general take of Zombies 3, mm-hmm. I was pleasantly surprised wow. by how much, how much fun that I was going to have with it. Now listen, like I said, the sentence left a very bad taste in my mouth. Never saw Camp Rock. Uh, you know, and so I just had like Disney Channel musicals fatigue, fatigue mm-hmm. and was like, I'm not in the demo. I, you know, I was also just like, I, I'm here for real musical theater you know i want i want the real grounded thing, grounded performances, performances. Mm-hmm. um but then also like this came out too with like disney plus and like you know as, as someone who's been laid off by the disney corporation <laughs> i was i did try to kind of just like avoid were you disney things yeah I'm just, let's just let's just tell your stories of your laugh <laughs> just real quick <laughs> but i just i just like i 
I just avoided a lot of Disney stuff. And so I was like, okay, yeah. I'm not going to be into it. So I think like by having, by experiencing this movie and how just like unserious it was <laughs> of just like, this is, this is the truth. And we're, we are a hundred percent invested in, in the story. Mm -hmm. um, but like, you know, they're not treating it like it's like, this is, this is like, not that this isn't art, but like the treat, not treating it like it's like, this is going to be like, Black Panther, or like this is like epic. Um, it's not Titanic. It's not Titanic. They're trying to be. I was just... one could say it is the greatest love story ever told. <laughs> That's true. One could say. Um, I I was very much pleasantly surprised that they that Disney was able to kind of like not not that it it's poking fun, but they were able to kind of just like let this just be fun, and it yeah. doesn't have mm -hmm. to kind of like mm -hmm. be um like more than that because you felt that descendants was not letting itself simply be fun yeah it was like there's too much of the it was the we got to redeem let's redeem the anti-heroes yeah. kind of situation yeah. and also yeah. like the last disney plus thing that we watched was hocus pocus 2 and mm. it did the same thing they were like we have to redeem the three sisters i'm like they could have just uh -huh. been yeah. fun witches you know mm -hmm. and they were also like putting in like this like best friend story like friendship story and then like what i was really what i was really dreading was like any reference to a disney thing and i'm so happy that there wasn't one yeah there's not even like tangential disney like espn or like you know abc mm -hmm. tv like because when we watch hocus pocus there were there were disney references and i was it's like, like I... referring to nate silver because 538 is a subsidiary <laughs> subsidiary <laughs> mm -hmm. abc news that kind of thing yeah yes like that kind of stuff so i'm like thank god everything the good up. morning america anchors scandal yeah <laughs> just exactly. some anything <laughs> Classic Disney Plus. Keep it in house. Tricks, for sure. you know. So I was happy that I did not get that experience. So it was probably one of my favorite things that I've seen on Disney Plus. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna go last. Molly, what did you think of this film? I feel strongly that this movie slaps. That's how I feel. <laughs> and you know what? Molly's gonna spell slaps. That's how that's how passionate yeah, she is. Put, 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 put her on the spot. <laughs> L-A-P-S. <laughs> so laps. I went into it. I mean, really, because we just did Top Hat and I was like, this is perfect. Because like, it's going to be like Fred Astaire, classic, amazing. And then we'll go into like Trainwreck, Disney Channel, yeah. prequel, Garbage. right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's so good. <laughs> it's... The, the music was great. The performances were great. The yeah. story was silly. Some yeah. of the jokes are the cringy, cringy jokes that are included in children's media, but some of the jokes yes. were actually funny. Yeah. My favorite one was the one where he was like, why are you being angry? And she was like, I'm being harmonious in a hostile way. And that was like <laughs> very funny. Poetry. And yeah, frankly, it's poetry. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> but I, I was so uh, pleasantly surprised. And I, as a reference earlier, thought it was like a really interesting thing. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a piece of children's media before that that the moral is sometimes conflict is good for us. Yeah, like that's such right? a nuanced thing like, to be like telling kids about. And I was yeah. so on board. I was so yeah. excited about it. They, it was like, the point was like, we have to work through it. It will yeah. be messy, but like, that's how you kind of find what like you truly value the most. And that like hostility is different from conflict mm -hmm. as well. Right. Yeah. That, that I think that's the point of Lord of the Flies. So, you know, it's been done before. <laughs> Jesus. But I, yeah. you know, I, yes, Adam, Adam famously <laughs> feels that no lessons could ever be repeated between two pieces of media. It's Mary true. Poppins as, as the Mary Poppins theory, healing, yes, healing relations with our father. So no one else needs to talk about it ever again. It's been Absolutely. done. It's been it's done. Been done. <laughs> well, I have to talk about what I thought about this movie. Okay, go for okay. it. I think this movie is the best movie of 2022. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I think I thought this movie is almost perfect. <laughs> I loved every second of this movie. <laughs> no, every not every ninety minute, every minute, every every one of those ninety every minutes, minute of single 90. minute of those ninety minutes. Okay, let me be serious. I actually really did like it. That, that was not a joke. I really did like this movie. Yeah. Um, it took me a few minutes to get into. Um, but that's on me for watching the media that I had watched right before it. So I had to like pause and be like, okay, let me recollect because I'm going into the Disney Channel. So you me... were so upset that McCarthy was defeated a 12 times. <laughs> yes, 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 you just yes. really had to collect yourself. I, yeah, we fully yeah. were just watching C SPAN right before. I was so watching I C SPAN at work, Kevin. which is very funny. Um, Kevin. I, I have a. I, RJ and I believe that this is the best. Um, this is the best way to do 
pop music for musicals is just to write pop music. Don't yes. make it pop yes. musical pop. Just make don't pop make music. it musical pop. The entire time I was watching this, I literally was like, "There is no point to do jukebox musicals anymore." Because if you want to do pop music in a musical, and it's like, well, we have to put Britney in whatever, blah blah, and try to fit a story under existing pop music already. No, you can write pop I think, music. I do think you're misunderstanding why people do jukebox musicals, but I agree. <laughs> from that like I a would musical, see this yes, from like a than mu- most musical, yes, from musicals, like music yeah. selection. I think it's like people are afraid to. Right. I don't know. Like, there is still... They're afraid to create original properties. Well, you've yeah. also started thinking about yeah. this because you've been recently thinking and listening to Six, the musical. Mm, that's and true, so that's, this true is that's where true. This is where the the start of this thought happened. That's true. Six was on my mind mm-hmm. during New Year, so... Okay. Can we go back to me? Sorry. Um... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, no, I really liked it. I liked almost all of the performances. I will be talking about the ones I did not like. Ooh, um, don't worry. Classic that... Adam teasing for his <laughs> well, teasing for who I didn't like in this movie. <laughs> Once again, coming for child actors. <laughs> um, but um, I know I just, I really like had a good time. And the best part, the best thing about this movie, and I hope we all agree, is that this movie, no- this movie knows it's so unserious and it's just sending up like, 1950s 1960s schlocky b sci-fi movies. sci-fi movies but and not that's what's sending not getting too caught up on the sending up part of it yes. it yeah. is yeah, yeah. it is in that world and it's having fun in that world it's not yes. making specific references Correct. it's yeah. not yeah. caught in those in like what jokes can we say that are like titles of movies where we're so yes. clever and we're mm-hmm. like proving we've seen alien movies it's just like the let's be in that it. world yeah. that's fun yes yes there's the bit where the ship comes down and he plays like the trumpet and then it responds back to him. And I think that's a reference to um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind when the like the ship comes down. and then it... So like, there are like a couple specific okay. references. Yeah. And there's like a lot of like visual language of the, the, the way the cameras use that mm-hmm. is like where they shoot them from below while they're looking Zaps. up at the sky. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. like mm-hmm. all of that kind of like very schlocky stuff. But like it's so fun. And no one, there's not a, there. the stakes couldn't be lower. And I kind of don't mind it. Like, I don't, no one's going to die. And do you know what gets us on that tone from minute one? Direct address. Break Think, that fourth wall. Break it. Absolutely. Look, I couldn't believe they did it and that they kept happening. And that every time I was like, oh, throughout. I don't, I don't hate it. Yeah. Frequent commentary because on the it, action. Because yeah. it was fully like, I did like that it was just Addison and Zed doing it, right? Like mm-hmm. they are. Le- our lover, our Romeo and Juliet. Yes. And they're fully mm-hmm. like connecting with us that like, isn't this crazy where we live? Isn't it crazy that he can't go to college? Let's see how but this never turns out. in the ironic that just happened that like just happened. kind of yeah. thing that we're 20, all sick 2014 of now. comedy yeah yeah the 2014 yeah. comedy any, it, any it, comedy yeah. it wasn't ever it wasn't ever just jim looking at the camera in the office which mm-hmm. is great in the office because it it came up with that joke right but yeah. like it's been too done it was like it's like their real thoughts that they're like really it's like it's, moments they're, of literally, they're literally it's, asides it's literally like yeah. Dor- it's like dora the explorer-esque like sometimes they'll be like what do we do sometimes like, what am yeah. i gonna do it's dora the explorer meets shakespearean asides that's what yes. it is exit pursued by a bear <laughs> yes mm-hmm. absolutely that's not spoken a lot but yes <laughs> yeah yeah but you could but you could i and mean reading. public domain baby <laughs> do whatever um, you want change change the bear make it a Make it a bear. You know what I mean? Like a Shut bear. Up. A bear. A bear. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I really I really did have a good time. I was I was really actually hoping that Molly like didn't like it so we could still have our classic argument, but I yeah. believe we will also still have a good time talking about how fun this was. Yeah. Yeah. It's but so I think long. the other thing too is I, I'm really gonna try hard in twenty twenty three to when I watch media, I want to meet the media where, where it's be, where it's mm. being created. This movie yes. is okay, not okay. it's not trying to be like, but we're better than West Side Story. This knows exactly it's what so it funny, is. It's so funny cuz Adam said that like oh, we yeah. were getting into the movie and he was like, "Look, I just need to see this movie where it's at because I'm not going to expect it to be West Side Story." And then right. <laughs> gonna be and then there was West kind Story. of a lot of references lot. in some ways for West Side Story. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of references. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, th- those are my general thoughts. We can go through the movie now. Um, if, if we, if that seems, uh, I think helpful. that suffices. Yeah. I think we're on the, so we start, okay. Start us, start us off strong. I, we're saying, me and RJ are just turning on the movie and we're saying what, how, do, 
we're starting in the, in the third act of a three trilogy we're franchise. Starting? Are you starting? <laughs> right. How are we going to know what the fuck is going on? Well, don't worry. This movie's got your back. You don't need to know one and two. Because Absolutely it's going to give you like a, a 90 second like animated comic book style recap of everything that happened that you need to worry but about. But not even what I loved was it wasn't a recap of previous events. We were shocked by some of the things you just told us about the previous movies. It's true, it's it was true. merely <laughs> a setup of where are we now and what are the stakes and conflict yeah. today? Yes. They were trying to recap it. They were what like, are the three groups of people that you that need to know about that? And werewolves. Yeah. The thing we're trying to do is get into college. That's that's what's happening that's, now. Yes. Yeah. We're not going to yeah. tell you about what other things have happened. You they, just need to know the reality of now. They do specifically call out that Addison has white hair in that bit. So I was like, well, that's got to mean something. I that. literally was like, I because I was so pessimistic in the beginning. I was like, there is no way they're going to be like, I'm persecuted as a blonde or like as Could very light. Imagine? I was like light haired. I literally was like, I just thought, that yeah, that I took be. that moment because it's like Zed doing the voiceover. And then mm -hmm. he said like, and a certain white haired girl or something that I thought it was just the little like, you all know her. She or she is like that's yeah. what I took mm -hmm. it as. I didn't see yeah. it as like that has to be a thing about the white hair. Then I just thought he. I thought it was like what made her distinctive and memorable to For kids. For some reason, know? I immediately was like they wouldn't have referenced. And they would have been they like our top her. cheerleader yeah. or whatever. They, the but they were like them specifically saying the white hair. I was like well, that means something. But it's funny. I get it. Check out hair. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. This is. This is the cherry orchard. <laughs> Absolutely. This is Chekhov's wig. Chekhov's wig would be a really good RuPaul's Drag Race <gasps> acting challenge name. Absolutely. Molly, right I, could I could stop this podcast right now and we could just talk about the wigs of this movie for six hours straight. Everyone I'm not wearing a wig. Every <laughs> single person in this film is wearing a wig. The, <laughs> and the wig the budget down. was ten dollars. There's not a wig in sight that's good. This is what I, I loved it. I was like, none of these wigs look good. I my shit can go. My favorite wigs looked, were yeah. yeah. I was gonna say my favorite wig was probably her mom, Addison's mom. <gasps> the reveal. The reveal. Uh, yeah, the reveal. The Roxy Andrews the moment. Roxy, yes, beautiful Roxy Andrews. The the thing that the wigs are, Adam, is replicatable. For Halloween costumes. Yes. Oh, and, you can, and you can look just is. like the characters. And there's the thing. Absolutely. We will find those exact pieces. Yeah. Um, so we start off this movie and they give this little backstory. And then we're just kind of right into there's like a game. And Molly's already told us all of this, but uh, basically the first act, the inciting incident is the aliens invade. So we'll, we'll listen to a little bit of a bop of this film, Alien Invasion, and then we will talk about it. Oh, falling from the stars, a distant galaxy. Oh, we're not sure who they are, friend or enemy. Molly, do you know what musical revelation we had come to while watching this movie? It's the best capture of dance on film that we've watched so far <laughs> for the podcast. Yeah, fuck Fred and Ginger. Yeah, Fred and Ginger has nothing. Nothing. I think. Well, I think it's it's a full execution of Fred's vision in some ways. Do you That's know true. What I mean? There, it's it's, it's absolutely... reached its zenith point. Yes, he would be so proud. Honestly. His legacy is all over this His film. Legacy. Yeah. No. Now That's... our our true revelation was that every song. Because they were so... Pure... I would say almost every song. Almost every song. But Alien Invasion specifically was so purely pop that Adam and I were like, this sounds like a K-pop song. It, sound, it sounded like This sounds exactly like a Blackpink song. Like, I was like, I could name the company. This is a YG song from the... The bomb, 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 aliens in your area. Like, it was full K-pop. Yeah. That I was like, I... I it made me kind of appreciate also like just me appreciating K-pop of like oh yeah like we we're just enjoying it in its purest form it's so beautiful yeah I mean I think you two are obviously the K-pop experts I could never name for you the company behind a song but like that but I do think like to write a pop song in 2022 it has to have a K-pop influence like it's yeah. so dominant that it's got to be in there somewhere but I think it's the full like K-pop influence is, a, is influenced a lot from like just the waves of music that western pop music has has but created that now k-pop has its own unique sound that it's like right. oh now for people who are like well now we want to emulate what pop is it's like now they're listening to k-pop you know it's just like this it's cyclical 
beautiful mm-hmm. cycle. It's horseshoe theory. Mm. I don't know what that is. You don't know horseshoe theory? <laughs> I'm assuming horseshoe something... theory is like the political theory that the further right or left you go, you get you start coming back to the same point. Interesting. I know the Overton window of like yeah. you throw something really wild, so then the thing you so really want to have happen sounds so more modern, modern than it is. Shifts, yeah. yeah. But I and didn't know the idea. And I also that it comes know the back. I also know the Kevin McCarthy principle where it's the idea that like <laughs> if the further right if the farthest right you go is like a libertarian. Like, yeah. I mean it's really yeah. fascism, but it's if that's the right you go in political ideology is like libertarian. But for the I left see. you go is like anarchism. They kind of want yeah, the same yeah. idea. They yeah. kind of in, in many ways, yeah. Um yeah, I think McCarthyism is if you succeed if you don't succeed ten times in try eleven really and see if that works. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I liked this song. I liked, uh, I liked, I, you know what I really like? I really liked how quickly we got into this movie. Like this is yes. like six minutes in and we are like, okay. And the plot People has begun. People should study this in film school for exposition. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not yes. kidding. Truly, I'm not kidding. Truly, truly, truly. Because truly. I didn't feel like I was like, I'm missing out by not watching one and two. Like in, I in literally no was way. like, I have I, everything I need. Again, yeah. with the being disappointed that I like assumed it would be, I thought yeah. that we would come on this podcast and have tons of fun of like, what do you think is what happening think? with this? I like, know. I didn't know. Absolutely not. Did not need to watch <laughs> the first two at all. No. Um, I was making, I, on my notes, I was making a running list of questions that I had and I, yeah, I did not have. crossing them off. <laughs> I was like, well, I mean, like, I get answered. that like animate, animated opening that tells you the stakes of the universe and then like direct address. Like those are things that are considered, I think like cheap for some writers and some mm-hmm. instances. And I'm not saying I want to watch like house of the dragon Everything. and have them like, give me a little animated <laughs> intro, but I am saying like the effectiveness. You want the dragon which... to look at the screen and tell you what's going on. <laughs> like Benedict Cumberbatch's what? dragon. You need to kill that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. But I am saying Mm-hmm. that if Betty Off and Weiss for the last two seasons of Game of Thrones had looked at <gasps> Zombies 3, maybe we'd all be in a better situation right now. Correct. Potentially. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I also, I, the real, in, in terms of like exposition, exposition, exposition writing, the thing I was like very surprised that I, I often when I watch films or TV, I will hear the lines that are like, what are you, my younger brother, doing here today? Where it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. don't yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah. No yeah. one talks like that. And I didn't hear it in this movie. And I was like trying to look for it. Like yeah. I was ready but to be like, knew, you knew what everyone's stuff. relationship was to each other just through their performances and yeah. their Just through their costumes. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. With the one exception that I did, <laughs> I did have like a moment where I was like, I think these two are dating. But they like stand really far apart for so much of the movie with Zed and Addison. Oh, really? And it was weird. It was weird to me because I was like, I think that's good chemistry. It's, yeah. I'm mm-hmm. not reading it like they seem awkward around each other. It was like they just got directed to like not be too, especially because the other couple, her best friend cheerleader and it's the zombie. all up on Mr. Like, zombie. Literally, like, literally constantly he has an arm around her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was like very clear physically what's happening there. But like. You guys didn't get this read at all. It felt like they were I like d- strangely far from each other for life. I movie. wasn't like reading it as like affecting the relationship or how I saw them in the relationship. I do see it now thinking about it like maybe because they were both fulfilling the leading player role of like they are talking to us, they're kind of emceeing what's happening. That I'm like, maybe because it's like and they were also like they're there was also a little bit of like they were building up to the miscommunication too, right? So he's just focused on trying to get to college. She's just trying to focus to the alien to to help the aliens. That when it was finally time for both of them to realize what they both get what they want, they're like, "Oh crap, we have fully gone opposite ends because now you want to go with the aliens, and now I'm going to college because I was trying to be with you." So I, mean, I don't yeah, know if maybe, it was like that kind of intention. Maybe that was the intention. I'm also wondering if it's just like now that I just learned it took two movies for them to kiss. I, I guess I'm used to oh, watching grown up media yeah. where like if someone was trying to shortcut to and then these two are dating, they would just like show them do a quick kiss on their yeah. way somewhere. You know, like that's that's generally the easiest way to establish that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe if, it was that that I was like yeah. waiting for the first the first scene little kiss to let me know. OK, and then these two are together and this is what's happening. So maybe that's, that's why. True. I maybe, that way. Yeah, maybe that's that's the one aspect that they were like, we already know that you guys know that they're together. So like they didn't have to, you know, kind of like I didn't clock that. they. Yeah. Were, I mean, I. I don't know. I didn't notice it at all. I didn't notice that. They I were just apart. had like, 
I was like watching the first couple scenes being like, I think these two are together, but it's like not impossible that they're brother and sister. So I'm just going to hold mm. off on assuming that until. Because uh, it is the like aliens... them working together a lot. Like it's like very much yes. like we're working together to do something. Right, right, right. Like... And then I, I think though, when the alien ship was coming down and then she was like uh, kind of bizarrely hanging out and like watching the ship come down, even though mm-hmm. everyone else was panicking. And then he came over to be like, I'm going to keep you safe. I'm going to do like, then there were things in that mm-hmm. little song like, that I was okay. like, okay, I, okay, this is okay. obviously romantic, but I just like, wasn't sure until that moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I going back to like the number, um, I liked how I, again, I said, I liked how quickly we get into this movie and I liked how the, it like, I do really like, I mean, this is silly because it's like, it's not, it's everything is so fake in this movie, but I really like the decisions of how they were going to like costume and like visualize all the characters. So Mm -hmm. you could like instantly be a three-year-old who doesn't know a ton of English and you know exactly who's in what group. Like it's so children's media, but not in like a bad way where I was like, these look, these all look, they, they all were distinct enough. Yeah that they were all different characters, but you could tell which circles I needed to like draw around the members of the group. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the aliens, right. I thought in their arrival, it was really nice. Like they come and they're wearing these sort of visors over their whole head. And so then mm-hmm. you get this great dance sequence where they're all kind of like a mass. Yeah. And then, but like immediately then they take it off and they become real characters and you're like, yeah. Oh, okay. I can like relate to these. Like, I didn't know how evil they would be or like other, yes. like for most of the movie, but like very quickly, you see human faces and are like, okay, these are like characters that I'm meant to understand and connect mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. And the song was giving me like full drum line, like the, mm-hmm. you know, you, mm-hmm. the, they had like a drum line playing, but then all, even like the dancing formation, which, you know, like the, it was already like a clear marker that like they are order precision, precision. Like the, this is like um, what sets them apart. Like mm-hmm. they're like a, I feel like the dancing was like not this good in Disney channel movies when we were children. Absolutely like not. these oh. kids are great yeah. and maybe it's partially that they're all now like in their early 20s yes. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> yeah they maybe like graduated from dance school at this point but like yeah. i was really impressed with the dancing this i yeah. think this number was the first moment where i was like am i gonna like this movie i think i am yeah mm-hmm. um so anyway we move on from this no- does anybody else have anything to say about them no i mean it was just i think it was them. just a really great introduction to the aliens for sure yeah and then they're kind of just like in the town they're just there now they're doing they're doing whatever we realize as molly said we realize that they have to find the most precious thing in seabrook in order to find the map to get to utopia because that's the MacGuffin. because their home planet was taken from destroyed it was destroyed environmentally so there there is a bit of a a green message there Hmm. because there was a moment later on where like there was a funny moment of zed of like why do you guys why are you guys even here like why are you trying to do it like why can't you just go home (laughs) Aspen was like, because our home was destroyed, or like our home was destroyed, yeah. and she was like, they turned off their like what blocks are most. She was like, I'm sorry, I didn't. No, actually, before we even get into this, we have to talk about the three aliens. So, oh, sure. and by that I mean we have to talk about Aspen and progressivism in media. <laughs> sure. So, I we're halfway through this movie, and oh, they yeah. were like, they blah 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 blah, and I paused it and I was like. Are they saying they singular or they plural? And so we watched the scene again, and I realized that they were referring to Aspen, Aspen as they them. So then I was I, like, "I'm going to disagree with you on that." The scene right after they land, then um, everyone in the town decides that they're going to talk to each alien individually, so that to get a sense of why they're there. Mm-hmm. And they go to talk to Aspen and start using and are using they them in that scene. I know, I'm just saying I didn't notice it until halfway through the movie i'm just saying that i i didn't know if you were saying like they spring it on you too late no no no, but no, I no. Know, like, they, he didn't they, they no quickly. i didn't know okay. i didn't clock it until halfway through and then i was like wait yeah. is that what's happening so that's when i like googled the actor and found out that they are also nine binary so i was like whoa this is wild i was not expecting this um because you know i don't know Disney's not been the best. I mean, they keep trotting out every no. other movie that the first gay person is in a movie or whatever, but. Mm-hmm. Um, and then do no marketing for that movie. So then they're like, well, so then that's Strange why, World flops. Yeah. So, you know, that's why the movie was bad because oh, yeah. there was yeah. a anyway. queer. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, I was I was tickled by Aspen's character 
and then like it it has like it has like a i wouldn't say a romance plot line but i would say like a characteristic it has a, it has a plot line that's about like attraction which yeah. i think is even bold for them to go that far yeah, yeah it yeah. was i mean honestly i was like we're having like almost a polyamorous moment in the scene <laughs> where aspen is sitting with um yeah. with the girl addison mm-hmm. and Aspen is discovering the idea of love for the first time because all of the aliens have had their emotions turned off and Aspen's just joyously, they were turned off. So the aliens have turned on emotion for the first time. And Aspen is joyously being like, I think I love Zed. And Aspen's, and Addison's like, well, I love Zed. And Aspen's like, oh, so we both love Zed. Awesome. And (laughs) Addison has to try to explain like, but we're a couple. So like, you can't, you're not supposed to love him. And then Aspen says like, so I have, I'm supposed to choose who I love. And then I was yeah. like, well, no, you can't choose who you love. And I was like, this is a really interesting like, was moment wild. of like, yeah. how do you explain the concept of like monogamy and relationship boundaries to like yeah. an alien being was like, great. I, I thought it was awesome. And then, yeah. So Aspen is non-binary and then also pansexual. I don't, it's, yeah. I'm not always sure what terminology what to term use to, to describe use, but... sexual orientation of a non-binary person because yeah. like, sure, sure, sure. You can't really be straight and non-binary because there's not an opposite sex necessarily yeah. if you're non-binary. Right. So whatever. But Aspen first falls for a boy and then falls for a girl and like nobody has any, you know, issue with that or questions about it or anything. And I thought that, that was also Which great. is funny because what's her name? Is is it Willa, the werewolf? The, Willa, the, the, main, werewolf. Yes. the main werewolf mm-hmm. is the one that Aspen and Willa, they form an attraction together at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, I was getting a, a feeling that like there was some sort of like unrequited thing for willa and addison because i was like why is she protecting so Anna? this is what i was wondering too but that's where zombies that's two when zombies two, when you read zombies like, two, i was like oh the they're like things. she's part of the pack there's like a thing okay yeah, yeah. okay but there, that that was by not having that context that was the vibe that i was getting that yeah. like oh there must that's maybe why she doesn't like zed or like there's something there well we've come to my first character that i have to say was not great which Oop. is Willa. Uh, I have to say it. Okay. I I thought like the actress was fine. It was not about the performance. It's more that I felt, and maybe this is like me being too like lasered in on whatever. I was frustrated that she seemed angry in like every scene of the film. But I and think, I just yeah. was like, mm, there's only like two black girls who are getting lines in this movie, and to give one of uh, them like all the ones where it's like I'm mad. I was like, can we not? We can't trust you. Well, the the zombie girl who was in the internship, I think, is black. Eliza. Oh. Um. Sure. Or maybe she's mixed race. I don't know. Yeah, I was. I don't know. Yeah. Um. And then obviously, she, it's, best it's weird. It's weird with the zombies because they also paint them like paler. So I was I. I didn't know. I I did. She did not read as yeah. like black to me. But sure. Yeah. Not that anyone. Um, yeah canceled again (laughs) canceling again um we'll just see ourselves out yeah i think that is a good point i mean i think i felt like with all the werewolves it felt very like well you were in the last movie so you have to be you're not the monster of the week really have something to do they were Um, kind of just like a plot point because it's like they were the aliens are after the moonstone because they think oh that must be the thing yeah. yeah, but not like a super necessary plot point because you will notice that I did yes. not mention them in the plot summary because I was like, you don't really need the werewolf diversion. I mean, the aliens think that the coordinates first could be in the werewolf moonstone, so they go mm-hmm. to find it there and then make the werewolves mad. But that's really like, it's like a detour that we go yes. on in order to have a more red movies. herring <laughs> almost. Right, so, right, yeah, right. it's a red herring. So it is very sort of unnecessary. But I, I like the idea of having characters who are quicker to assume hostility and like quicker to yeah. anger and stuff to give other characters a place to work off to, of and moderate yes, but to I totally like challenge yeah. sure. concern about having one of the black leads be the person who's always jumping to that yeah i think it was just hard because the other two werewolves the guy had like a thing for eliza so like that was his the mo yeah. and then the other werewolf cam girl eliza yes, eliza Mm-hmm. all right Twitch this is your children um yeah and then right the other werewolf girl was also i mean she's a kicker on the football team i, yeah. know, I know that but bar- she was barely really in this but she yeah. had like she it was so weird because she had the like camilla cabello sound to her singing like she was like twisting the ends of her it's like those folk white white girls Chris sings Moist. yeah Chris my like that's how she was like saying her words and i was like that's so funny because you're in the football team you know, just breaking down stereotypes. Sure. You can't be Camille Cabello and also be 
on play playing football. football. Yeah, that's a stereotype. That famous yeah, stereotype. Famous. We all Billy Graham doesn't play football. It's a stereotype. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love that RJ's like. <laughs> there's so many female football players. It's like you know the Camila Cabello. The Camila Cabello type. Like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> that specific that's the one. Type. Sorry, not to confuse you. Sorry. <laughs> Fine. Less of a Kamala Harris football type. Of... <laughs> Less of a who's who's our... like a Malala football player. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who's our new pro tempor? What's her name? With Patty? No. Uh, Patty Murray or something? Yes. Less of a. <laughs> Extremely Tammy Baldwin over here. Oh, like, Tammy, so Tammy Tammy, absolutely Baldwin. Tammy Tammy. Yes. A Nancy Pelosi football player. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw this video. RJ sent me this video today. That was Nancy Pelosi being like, you know, I was Speaker of the House and I was minority Minority. leader for George Bush and Barack Obama. And I was Speaker for what's his name. And then I was Speaker for, uh, or I know I was minority leader for what's his name. And then I was Speaker for President Biden. And I was like, she's so petty that she wouldn't even say President Trump. Just so funny. She's iconic. I don't care. Didn't isn't she the one who gave the speech that was like, I've enjoyed working for four presidents and she worked for five? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Her fo- her playing iconic. football yeah. mm-hmm. is different than than it's different from a Pelosi kind of playing football. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, um that was all I was gonna say about Willa. Other than that, I have no problems. Okay, so moving on to Ain't No Doubt About It, which is Addison and Zed's like couple song where they're like, We're not sure about what's going on in our relationship. That's the vibe. This was such a great concept for a song. Yeah. yeah. I was telling Adam, this is the like, I'm not falling in love with you. It's the song, song. from it's the song in Buffy. But like but like diff- yes, it's the Buffy I'll never tell. Mm-hmm. Like it's like lovey dovey, but like what they're actually saying is they're like or like their their fears or their, you know. Right, because no, the, yeah. the bit of the song is that they, in the lyrics, it's all about how, like, we're going to stay together forever. We'll always be mm-hmm. in love. Nothing's going to break us up. But then they keep having these little asides to the so, camera, like, I hope. And it's yeah. it's really, it's nice because it's not that they are doubting their relationship on an emotional level. It's that they know they're going to go to college and that people don't tend to stay with their high school sweethearts, right? And so mm-hmm. it's their concern that, like, something's coming down the pike. Life is going to happen to Life's us. Gonna happen. Yeah. And it might pull us apart. Not, I... Not like a, uh, I'm not telling my significant other that I don't really love them kind of thing, right. but instead like a, uh, yeah, I I really like, I have every intention of loving you forever, but I just like, can't, I'm 17, you know, I can't really yeah. make that promise. And so the visual bit is that they keep being in like physical danger, but they're dancing through it. Yes. And I thought it was such a smart. Going over you know, like construction. Yeah, almost yeah. getting picked up almost. by the the big tractor big, thing yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Big machine guy they, they're dancing in like a uh archery place what do you call it field an archery an, a range range an archery yeah. range and the arrows are like barely missing them yeah uh yeah it's great um let's listen to a little bit of ain't no doubt about it it's you and me for the rest of our lives together we're not breaking up, we're not falling out, we won't change, I hope. Living perfectly, so happily till forever. When it comes to trust, there's nothing that we can't say. I hope. We're not worried, definitely not worried at all. So disturbing, how all of these stars align. Like how? We're not nervous and totally unconcerned with things uncertain and there's a lot we're gonna be fine so fine ain't no doubt about it it's working all right all right all i'm thinking about is how everything's gonna be okay no complications in our way it's fine we're fine ain't no doubt about it this one sounds like a Cravity song that's also another K-pop group. And I was like, this is Cravity. This is crazy. Hey, this is, did it's... every song in this have a K-pop group that goes with it? Uh, not every. Not I don't every think Exceptional Exceptionals was the only one that I felt like didn't. Oh, I don't think I'm Finally Me had any corollary. Yeah, that was more like your T-Swifty. That of. felt mm. T-Swifty for sure. Yeah. For sure. Great call, RJ. Great call <laughs> on that football. <laughs> Big football. football energy in this Oh. Huge football energy, okay, but yeah, but but then really. cheer, cheer. It was cheer, like the they. It was the the beginning. They don't even like play the game. They had the red herring at the beginning yeah. of like the rally. Which is also the good because in Imagine. in us actually not being, not 
for telling terrible events. Damar Hamlin, I think oh, is the, name of the yes. guy who just had a heart attack on the field of the NFL. Oh, yes. so it's tragic. been making me feel more and more like we should not we even should... allow children to know that football exists. So yeah. um, I was kind of glad that there wasn't too much, uh, look tackling. at this hero who plays football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. tackling yeah. each yeah. other. Or, yeah. yeah, it was about him being like, okay, you're a great uh, football player, but like, we got to get you to college. It does what the... is, what is going to make you get to college? I also really like the visual thing that this movie does, which reminds me a lot of like Edward Scissorhands where like the regular people are all in like pastels and they're mm -hmm. all kind of like Pleasantville vaguely like fifties, sixties, yeah. timeless Americana, like suburb energy. I liked that like specific stylization for the like quote unquote regular people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I thought the song was fun. I, yeah, I, I this is so, I like the movie. I don't know. We're, what are we going to keep saying this over and over and over? It's silly. Um, let's keep going. And uh, then, what is, oh, oh, so we get into the werewolf situation. The aliens think the Moonstone right, has the map. Has the map. So they try to go, they have to like break down the, the force field. They do it. The werewolves are smelling something. They realize the coordinates aren't there, but the werewolves already know that the they can't was be attacked. beamed up by RuPaul Charles. RuPaul won't beam them up because of how rude they are to their elders. Right. Absolutely. Ugh. Loved this bit. Yeah. And so just out of pettiness, just like, no. So then the werewolves are trying to kill them. Mm hmm. And they sing a song called Come On Out. And again, not a stake was raised in this. Like, yeah. no, there are no stakes in the song. Like, there's no doubt that they'll get caught. I mean, like, I'm also an adult watching it. So whatever. I'm but, sure kids may be like, oh, my it, gosh. But yeah. the, best, the best part my was when they thinks were, the whole thing is surprising. Yeah. When they were, like, trying to, quote, unquote, run away, one of the aliens, like, just went invisible for a little bit and then went uninvisible. And I was like, you could have just done that. But no, it wouldn't have made sense. They have to dance, oh, I walk that to happened. You. Yeah, yeah, the Bob, the blue Bob girl, Allie, um, mm. Allie. Um, gotcha. But this song again sounded like a Blackpink song. So, gotcha. It again slaps. It's a good song. It's yeah. a good song. Uh, I do. I mean, I like a MacGuffin in a movie. I don't. I don't get mad that they exist. I know some people have problems, and it's like we have to get the thing. I don't care. Get the thing. That's what my daily tasks are. Yeah. That's I what I'm to, looking I for. I have to go to Target and I have to buy a luggage tag. Okay. <laughs> this is that, but in this movie. Yeah. Um, anyway, that was a very specific reference. <laughs> get the thing. <laughs> Gotta get the thing. Um, I thought you were going to talk about how, like, I hate having red herrings and, like, thinking it's a moonstone. Just, like, Ben Shapiro not understanding Glass Onion. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't actually see what the thread was. I just saw people say he had a bad take and doesn't have basic media literacy. Liter has, yeah. No, not even media literacy, just literacy in general. Cause just he was like, just can't read. His biggest takeaway <laughs> was that you don't find like the first half of the movie. Do you have you, first of all, have you seen glass? I have seen it. Okay. okay. I have seen it. Yes. All listeners. Spoiler, Spoiler alert. alert. Don't get spoiled. I'm not going to get too it. into what it is. I'm just going to say he Skip was ahead, like mad 30 seconds? that. Sure. Yeah. 30 seconds is fine. Okay. He was like mad that he was like the first half of the movie doesn't even count because they have to re-explain everything that's happening halfway through the movie. Did and he I was see like, the first one? Did he? Has he seen a murder? I like. I don't even understand. Does he understand? That's like a. That's like the central thing that Ryan Johnson is like. Yes. Here's the thing I do with my movies is this thing. Yeah. Also, I saw Wild. someone else. This is not his take, but someone else. We're getting had past like, thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to get the seven okay. specific now. Where they were like, um, I guess who it was like 10 minutes into this movie and i was like first of all how great how how Congrats. how did you do that because that doesn't even make you don't even know the thing until yeah the thing doesn't the movie yeah and secondly guess it the person who did it it's called a whodunit because that's whatever whatever that's not actually the exciting part of mysteries right. yeah it's it's miss motive it's Miss yeah. Motive, Little yeah. Miss Motive. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's my favorite one, Little Miss Little Motive. Miss motive. <laughs> little, nice. little Miss Motive is what they're really about. No, absolutely. Yeah, that's um, it's how it's how I mean, it's, it's going on all levels. And also, the person saying like I guess who it was is very the vibe of like every single person who gets canceled on the internet. Then a bunch of people have to come out of the woodwork and be like, I always got bad vibes from them. I actually never liked them at all. And I'm like, okay, congrats. Like, who's your trophy? Like, what do you want out of yeah. this? Firstly, do I don't that? believe you. You yeah. didn't, you, you don't have perfect um, omnipotence and can tell from vibes whether they're every single person is good or bad. Yeah. And secondly, like, who cares? 
Also, it's a bit of media. I'm pretty sure that if you name any, you have a pretty good chance if you name any named character in the piece that you can figure out who did it. Because it's not going to be some yeah, you random. Could, you could play a game of let's look at the poster for Glass Onion and everyone put down a name of one of the people in this movie in an envelope and just one of us will probably be right. Yeah. It's one of the people on the poster. That's for sure. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to how everything works. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, media literacy is dead. Congrats. Yeah. Um, th- we're here this to save it. This podcast is single-handedly we're, 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 yes, but we're saving it. Uh, well, we're about to hit two hours pretty soon. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think that there's really not much that I want to say about the werewolves. I, I agree with you, like Molly, that like because they weren't the monster of the week, they don't really get that much. They are just used as a plot yeah. device. But I will say, the aliens, Miss Mothership, when, when they were in that giant control panel, and it is a control panel that is like that's an egg holder. There are multiple colored mm-hmm. eggs on this circular Oh my god. circular control panel. Yes. And when they're like, "Oh, those are coordinates." And they lift eggs to move to a different holder of the of the control panel. Adam had to pause the movie and started cackling and then was fully just like I've never experienced this much, much joy in a movie. In a I was, it was so, it was so, it was so silly because at first silly. I thought it was just like they're big buttons, like they're big silicone buttons, and then they just moved big them. Ass. And I was like, yeah, this is what like your local theater does because they have right. no budget. Like, but this no, movie- it's, it's because a local theater would try to like, um, they would try to make a facsimile of existing spaceship things. This yes. is not a thing yeah. I've seen in other. No, no, that's true. You know these what I mean? Are, it is so low tech, but it's such a unique idea of like there are yeah. balls and you pick them up and you put them in different places and that's how you navigate a ship delightful i love it yeah. so i think silly. i also it's so i think funny. i also loved, I loved it. it i've been feeling very like i wish i had more analog things in my life do you know what i mean i've been like mm-hmm. i wish i had buttons on things like i everything is touch screens now i want to touch mm-hmm. you need a touch fidget stuff and pick them up and feel weight in my hands you know yeah, what yeah. i mean this is getting it's giving anyway uh, <laughs> so molly's doing well by the way <laughs> i wish flying all kinds of aircraft required just moving balls from from one spot to another mm-hmm. <laughs> let's bring that back. That's, that's the te- that's, i wish driving my Tesla. car was moving balls please <laughs> please make it happen absolutely to- make it happen elon okay elon, elon go focus on that and take a take a step back from twitter we're, we're writing a, a we're writing a list of people that need to watch zombies 3 elon musk um mm-hmm. the games of games of thrones <laughs> games of thrones the game of thrones yeah benny off and weiss the yes. game of thrones writers mm-hmm. uh We'll get more. We'll get more. We'll get him a third. We're, yeah. we're ha- barely halfway through. Let's Congress, like, you know, all, all, all sitting members of Congress. Kevin McCarthy, Congress. You, Kevin McCarthy. Kevin, you probably need like just a night to de-stress. And I think that this would be a great way <laughs> to do that. And, and Little no, Miss Motive herself. And be okay that you know, conflict can exist and that's okay. And sometimes you have to learn. I do. I think, I think that would be a real bomb to him at this moment. You know bomb. what I mean? Yeah. Let's listen to a little bit of Come On Out. I got a hunch. You're all around us. You broke our trust. So things got serious. You can run, run all you want. We know what you've done. You're not welcome out here. You're out of luck. Cause we are hunters. Don't wanna freak you out, but we are monsters. You can run, run all you want. We know what you've done. You're not welcome out here. Hands down, you made us an enemy. Cries out, we'll find you eventually. Can't run from destiny. Molly, you wanted to talk about Exceptional Zed. Thank you so much for remembering. Um, I thought it was a good song, again, just like musically. But mm-hmm. I also think that the idea of a song about needing to be exceptional, exceptional. for others and feeling the pressure and being like, in in many mm-hmm. ways, like I, I know that I am good, you know, in a lot of ways, but I'm also so nervous because I feel this need for other people because the whole thing is like, if Zed can get into college, he's going to be the first monster to go and that'll open the doors to all the monsters. And I thought that like that pressure is something a lot of kids can probably relate to. Even just like, even if you don't have that sort of exceptionality of like the first in your family to go to college or whatever, but even like Mm -hmm. I'm there's like any kid that's applying to go to college or like get your first job or whatever the thing is of feeling that pressure of like everyone around me has told me that I'm good. And Mm -hmm. now I have to try to make good on it. Um, I thought it was a very relatable emotion for the young people watching the movie, and I thought it was great. A universal experience, one could say. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I think like 
This is the most talkative RJ has ever been in an episode. I'm, I'm not so, kidding. I'm just so passionate, you know, about the UMBI S3. About the UMBS. I also think that, like, because I never thought it until you said it, like, yeah, the the pressure that he had of like, well, kept that... being like, this will be if you get to college, every monster will get to college, and like, even in the little outro animation, like at the end of the movie, you see other monsters in Seabrook. Yes. It, living life in Mountain College or whatever. Right. <laughs> sure. And I thought it was especially good because he's a very confident character. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so seeing a confident character have a moment of cracking under yeah. the like, because this is what it's all been leading to, yeah. was really great rather than feeling like he has to be down on himself throughout to make that story happen. It can just be this moment of, mm-hmm. oh, like it's really time and I'm not sure if I can deliver. I'm exceptional I guess time to live up to the hype. The and this movie also did something that I was very surprised by. It's, this movie really did surprise me in so many ways. Where yeah. she, like, Addison has developed these, like, electric powers oh, at this yes. point. And she keeps shocking Zed, which, like, is turning on. It's, like, overriding his Z-band. So he keeps, like, zombieing Zombie. out. And that's what makes the, like, recruiter run, run like, run screaming or whatever. And I thought as we were, she kept touching him Mm -hmm. and like shocking him that he was going to, it was going to be a thing where he like yelled at her and then they were going to like be sad or something that that was going to have to be what they like reconciled over was like, Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have yelled at you. I was just really stressed. Like I I genuinely was like, okay, like this is very standard, like whatever. And it really wasn't that because he is like, don't touch me, but I'm so happy for you that you're like getting these powers. You need to go like find the aliens to help explain that you're like (laughs) part of it now. Zombies three showing us healthy relationships. It was wild. It was I did think I did feel like there's like the the very end of that. She says like I'm so sorry, and he says like don't be, and then he don't runs be. after yeah. the the woman. The but recorder, I was like, yeah. I mean, she does keep touching you though. Like she could be a little bit bad. <laughs> she she could yeah. stop. She could have learned her lesson a little bit quicker. I feel like yeah. maybe. Yeah. But um, no, they're they're absolutely sweet to each it other. Was like, it was great. like not. It was not the miscommunication of the relationship or whatever, or like being on their own paths to figuring out who they are. They never took it out on the other person. Yeah. Yeah. Which like, <laughs> it's just so This nice is more kind me. media. Yeah. Kind media, 100%. In, in our theme of kind media. Which I, uh, makes sense now thinking like, okay, if the first two zombies were about like, yeah, segregation and <laughs> um, like xenophobia, then like it is nice for this one to be like, we as a collective city have learned our lesson. Yes, there's still the, the cops or whatever trying to get the aliens, but like it never felt like it was like there were... Well, they still I mean it still has the like xenophobia aspect cuz they do turn on the aliens right That's at the That's true, right at the end. end. They're just like get out, you know. They were like we knew you they were have bad to all along. Desegregate college that like apparently higher education is the last like, the last monster Absolutely. then. That's true, yeah. Also, I think Institutions. the cops are led by Addison's father. Yes, I think he's Okay, so Asin's mother is the mayor. Correct. But yeah, his I learned that from job, Wikipedia. <laughs> his his job. Well, she had a giant button that was like reelects me for. I'm Mary sorry, my media literacy is out the window. <laughs> Missy Wells. Yeah, but I for I wasn't clear about like what his job was, but yeah, maybe he's just like. He said something about when Addison was going to leave at the end. He says, like, I'm going to get all the cops to stop you or something that I was like, oh, that's like kind of not funny. OK, yeah. What at what point in this movie, RJ, did I turn to you and say, Alan, a or a Alan Aspen, Allie, Addison. Addison? When did that? When did that oh. happen? Because we were probably halfway through, right? No. It was well before. It was definitely, it was definitely before well before the reveal. The reveal. Wow, I'm impressed with you, and I'm again impressed with these writers. I yeah. I was I couldn't believe that I got it because I really don't ever. I think get it's because she quickly. did she did sprinkle yeah. in certain things of like. I think it was when the aliens were like telling about like their like what their true mission is to Addison because they told her first and like I think there was something in the those lines of her being like oh just like how I've never felt like I was in somewhere so like I want to help you I think at you were like Adam I didn't, think, I didn't me am I what? am I the, am no, I the most that precious is thing foreshadowing oh. they put you on this podcast just for this moment. Oh my and God. now I I must take my leave. 
<laughs> this is when I'm beamed up. Yeah, that there Please, was something mother. like that where where you were like, I bet she's an alien. I don't even know if I like there was clocked those like little. She, it was small lines. They were really small, small lines. lines. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I probably I subconsciously did, but I don't know. I didn't think about the name thing. I mean, from the moment when when the aliens come and everyone else is freaked out except for Addison, except for I did her. have I a moment like, of okay, like, okay, so she's got some connection to the aliens yeah, like yeah. that. There yeah. were there were obviously hints beforehand that she would have some special thing going on with them, but I didn't think about the names at all. So mm-hmm. nice. Um, <laughs> Good job, Adam. You're the most media literate person in this podcast. We Congratulations. Get it. You saw that she was the mayor. <laughs> because <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Because, because the thing you is, saw like, the murder. We got when it. they when they reveal the scout is the grandma or whatever, yes. and she has like white hair, and then explains like that's why I have white hair. I was like, ah. Well, for when they first showed that scout, and you she had the visor and just the white hair, I was like, oh, that's that related. I thought it was actually her mother, and mm-hmm. that Ad- Addison was adopted this entire time. But, but no, then, it was even oh, more wild. It was even more wild. Yeah. Again, but surprising. <laughs> grandmother. And her mother has been an alien this entire and time. Mama. And, yeah. and mom also gets to do a wig. Re- Honestly, best part of the movie. Wig reveal. Right. I will say, I was a little bothered that, like, she is an alien, but she's, like, a quarter alien, right? I mean, like, she is still the biological yes, daughter of... Yes, because she fell in love with a human. Right, so the, so the, the grandmother, grandmother fell in love with a human, had a child, and then that child had this child. So she's, uh-huh. like, a quarter alien. So, yeah. like... <laughs> It is for sure crazy. i'm great i'm glad that you're like connecting with your heritage and whatever oh. but she they kept talking about it like she's just an alien Do you know yeah. what i mean i was like yeah. you're an alien well. and a human that's like mm. you're you know what i mean you have to yeah, pick yeah. a side famously let's talk to some biracial folks see how they feel <laughs> biracial people please write in and tell us how you felt seen in this movie <laughs> yeah quarter racial well that was the thing like i mean th- th- that becomes her thing later where it's like they're trying to fix the mothership to leave because they were running out of energy source or power because their hair was all starting to like turn splotchy because the blue it represents their like stardust or whatever and it's all starting to like pop so they were on limited time so they had to get everything whatever and they use the moonstone the werewolves give the moonstone blah blah, blah 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 but like there was so much electricity that like or whatever there's so much energy surging that like it, they would if an alien tried to do it they would like decompose basically but if if a different being they needed someone with alien powers to handle it, but also not fully alien to like withstand Yes, I mean, it. no, you're right. It did pay off there. I guess it was just that she kept making comments being like, this is why I've never belonged. It's because, because of an yeah. alien and blah, blah, blah. And I just wanted like her dad to be like, but you're also human and like you also belong here. There. And like, yeah. I hope that one day you'll come back and like you can be in both places. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I wish that so, somebody like- also said like, you're that not could have been from here now. <laughs> yes, that was the that was the note that we should have given when they wrote the we'll make sure the cops uh, don't make you leave or whatever. Yes. Instead of that, I would love her dad to be like, like, you're also my daughter and you belong here too. And I'm proud of you for going and I'm going to miss you. And I hope you come back one day. That's what I wanted. Nepo baby. She's the mayor's daughter. She's Nepo baby. Mayor's daughter, head cheerleader. Great alpha. I mean, it was, I did think as I was watching that, I was like, it's interesting that they made us feel like this um, star football player and head cheerleader are the underdog. (laughs) it's wild yeah, it was crazy. um yeah two things one was i loved that they figured out that like everybody's got a part that they need to help to rewire the ship or whatever and then but what i loved was that then they all get beamed up and then you like literally see them moving wires around and stuff because i feel like a lot of times in like especially kids movies where they have to come with the cute little like everyone's got their little thing they do it's the actual thing they do is very quick it'll yeah. just be like oh, we just need to run it through the moonstone. And then they all just like touch the moonstone and it's that's it. Yes, yeah. And mm-hmm. it was like, we actually see them doing work to like yeah. implement the science. We have to yeah, fully put jumper good. cables on the moonstone. We have to do actual jumper cables. To RuPaul's and everybody is battery. Yeah. Putting, in, putting in some elbow grease to make it happen. Yes. You know? RuPaul's yes. battery. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the other thing was, I did not like that they were like, this will kill anyone except for Addison. And then it doesn't work. And Zed's like, I'll just do it too. And then they're like, it will kill you. And he was like, it's fine. And then it just doesn't. And I was like, love doesn't do that. Okay. Oh, I have to go back. I have to go back. Just like math isn't magic. Love. Math isn't magic. And love. If somebody says you're going to be electrocuted being like, but I love the person who's, who's over there is like, not going to matter. You're still going to die. So don't maybe do that. I love our, I need to keep track of fork of our, like, what they should have, it should have just been like a, she's like freaking out and she's not sure she can. And he should have gone over and been like, you can do it. I believe in you. I believe in you because she did the whole thing about believing in him before the scholarship interview. Right. There could have been an emotional moment that didn't involve him also conducting the electricity. 
I yeah, see the floor. I, yeah, I fully was like, I, who are you I, voting I, for for speaker? <laughs> You said all that, but you didn't say who you're nominating. That's so weird. You went up there. Madam and... Clerk, I nominate <laughs> Michelle Obama to be speaker. Of the house. My uh, brother, because we've been watching it all day, my brother texted me at one point when he's in a meeting, be like, so do we have a speaker? And I texted him back and said, yeah, it's crazy. They unanimously voted for Obama in the last round. <laughs> it was fucking wild. <laughs> it was so unexpected. Just like this movie. Just like this Surprising. movie. Surprising. So many parallels. Um... I have to go back to another performance that I didn't like in this movie, which Emily alludes to. Yes. There is the bit where the the werewolves are like, they're taking the moonstone. Um, and so Zed stands up for the aliens because Addison is like, no, they didn't. And he's standing, he's. Because he knows that Addison is, is part alien. I don't think she. Correct. Has announced it yet to anyone. Um, announced. And so he, he like he's... turns off his Z band and like zombies out. And then his little sister, what was her name? Zubat? Zoe. 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 Zoe also like monsters out or whatever. And then it's like resolved and no one fights. And it's because they're like, we don't want to fight. Yeah. Instantaneously fight. Yeah. conflict to resolve. Addison's like, don't do it. And they're like, oh, fine. Okay. <laughs> um, and then he like makes a comment to his sister because there had to have been in the previous two movies like she can't be she's she can't zombie out or something like oh, that. Oh, that they had to yeah, be something because like that's the only reason this line like makes sense. But he was like, "Wow, you can zombie out now," and she was like, "Anywhere, anywhere. If you needed me, big bro, I would have done it." And I was like, <laughs> "No." <laughs> I didn't need her to speak. <laughs> that gave me like the worst like '90s Disney Channel original movie energy. Yeah. Just like. I've got your back. And I was like, Pugh. there were a, li- a lot, like there was, yes, that's in this movie. I think like where I felt it the most were the talking in the songs. So it's so like in the, in the alien invasion where they're like, we're really scared, but it's kind of cool still like that. They're still like that kind of decommy like, oh, okay, I'm not. Oh, I didn't, that didn't bother me there. It bothered me in the songs for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think cause I was just like, I just want these songs to <laughs> be popular. Just be pop. I mean, don't it talk, didn't bother talk, me that there were don't talk about plot. things that are signature to Disney Channel original movies in this Disney Channel that's original true. movie. That's true. It was, See? We're it still was as working. I expected. Yeah, we're still working it was through also, being able to do that. Yeah, I, I for some reason thought that his line was like asking her if she was okay after zombieing out or something rather than like, oh, I thought it was like, oh, you can you do can, it. Yeah, I thought that's what I, I'm not going to Or like, here was I, her I first... believe you that that's what the line was. I wasn't paying that close attention, I'm sure is what happened. Real Ben Shapiro over here. But, um, <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't all that. So I'm going to take that clip out of context, aren't I? Um, yeah, that's, I'm just making that the clip I'm when, I, when I'm canceled one day. <laughs> it's gonna be. It's gonna I be Molly's audio. You're gonna do that filter where it's just the two eyes and the lips, and then you're gonna like <laughs> lip sync to Molly saying that and put that over Ben Shapiro's face. Um, yeah, it's sure. a hat on a hat on a hat. And, 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 and then you do have to have the um, glass onion poster oh, yes, as like yeah. green screen behind me yes, and then just yeah. circle somebody, but don't circle the person who does do the murder. Correct. <laughs> circle a different character. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the child actor was fine. I didn't have strong thoughts on it. Yeah. Um, it's fine. I just, I just was like, this is, it was another one like the werewolves where I was like, oh, they were in the past too. So we had to, we had to cut them a check. Have something. Gotta put him in here. Um, the real one that I actually didn't like is Bucky, to be quite honest. Yes. I did and not... reading your synopsis, Bucky had a bigger role He's as been the, the villain in every... Yeah. So or now... The antagonist, that's a better term. So now his, yeah. his, him antagonizing is just annoying. <laughs> He, yeah. I did think he felt the most Disney Channel character. Yes. It yeah, felt like and most of them... Way. Like how he yeah, looked, most how of he them dressed, felt like... too. Like, they were still Disney Channel characters, but it was, like, a little more grounded than what I expect as a baseline from Disney. And he was very, like, caricature, caricature. Yes. Not he was he a, a little more on the gu- guideposts. Like, they they, they knew yeah, the Yeah, but not having enough fun with the fact that he was a caricature. Yes. He was yes. doing, like, characterization like you do on a multicam sitcom. Like, he was giving me Kramer, but we were shooting, giving, like, him up close. But like, he was giving, like, Disney Channel multicam. So he was giving, like, Sonny with a Chance. Or, like, he knew sure. he, there was, like, a laugh track after every line that Wizards he was saying. Wizards of Waverly. Yeah. Good luck, Charlie. Hannah Montana. Sure. The brother, specifically, yep. from Hannah Montana. The oh, old thirty-six-year-old, fourteen-year-old brother. You've gotcha. never seen it. 
So the the brother who's supposed to be, I think, younger than Hannah is played by someone who's like three times her age. Well, it's wild. That's Hollywood, baby. That's and, all- and and that's, Adam, and that's Hollywood. And Adam had a an opposite experience where he thought the actor playing Bucky was a lot older and was like, "This man's got to be thirty. And he was like, "He's days. like twenty two. And yeah. I was like, oh. "I'm sorry, what?" So just all normal things happening. Um, okay, so moving on to someday. This is post. Uh, she decides post, to leave with the aliens. To leave. Yeah, everyone's sad. Which I was also again genuinely sad at, even though I like don't know these characters that well. So again, good job. Yeah, I was like I, crying, but I mean, like I cared. And the song, and that's huge for Molly. That's because she's for never me. turned her emotions on. <laughs> and the song. Felt you like... felt represented, right, by the aliens. You were like, ah, <laughs> never show emotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Uh, blue Bob, you know. Yeah, yeah. Blue Bob. <laughs> Pronouns. I mean, truly, yeah. If I if I were to be a character in this movie, it would be Allie, probably. Yeah. She. I. I was not. I was not pro Allie until that line about her when she was like, "I'm not." Matt, what was it? I'm not angry. I'm just harmonious in a hostile way or something yes. like that. And it was I was great. Like, oh, yeah. I've turned the corner. I'm full. I'm yep. full team Allie now. <laughs> the song someday. The song I'm assuming is a reprise of a song that was done in the previous zombie. Yeah, I film. felt that that seemed. It felt likely. reprisey, but I'm like, it felt I've never heard this. Reprisal. Correct. Yeah. It's the first time that it was not sung by just Zed and. Uh, oh. Addison. It was sung by everyone. Okay. I see, I see, that I see. also makes sense that I was like, I do feel like, why are these other characters singing in the song? So, got so it. That makes sense. It would yeah. mean a lot more if I, we had seen the first two, but you know what? No. We never will. So. We never will. That's fine. And I understood that it was a West Side Story reference, right? That seemed yes. like. That's yeah. definitely yeah. what it seemed like yeah. for sure. Um, so, here's a little bit of sun- so- Someday. 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 This could be, this could be ordinary Someday Could we be something extraordinary You and me side by side Out in the broad daylight If they laugh, we'll say We're gonna be someday Someday, someday We're gonna be someday And uh, that's pretty much the whole movie. They I'm not going to lie. After, after, this, after this, when they were like, okay, we've got the coordinates. The mothership is up and running. Let's go. Let's find. Let's look at this map. And then it was you. And it was Seabrook. I was. I don't know why I was genuinely like shocked. I thought the movie was going to end. Like they sing. They leave. She leaves. They find home. And then they have to move on with like Seabrook without her. Shocked. I was like, oh. I, I was yeah, like. I, get, yeah. they I wasn't it shocked. straight enough. And they did it for long enough that I was like, wow, this is pretty bold that this movie is going to end on like the characters Leave. are going to be in different places. And like that yeah. happens sometimes in life. Sorry, kids. But then when it will like continued after that song yeah. and then she was like, let's talk about what it means to go to Utopia. I was like, oh, OK, I think I see like there's there's more to the movie and we're going to turn it back around. Yeah, I to, to continue my theme of um, guessing the movie ahead of time, I did assume that You're they so would. smart. Thank you. I just really get decoms, to be honest. Um, I did, <laughs> <laughs> I did guess that they were going to end back up together and everything was going to be. I like mm. was like, oh, I'm sure the kids are going to move in, blah blah blah. But I did not expect it to be like how the again like the explanation of being like, well, actually, conflict is like a good thing to have sometimes yeah, because yeah. that's the only way you can like resolve anything is by like talking things out and da 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 da. And I was like, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Congress needs to watch it. All of Congress that's needs to watch That's what movie. we're saying. They're like, we're going to hold the votes. Not just Kevin. We're going to spend 90 minutes all while you're lower, all here. Lower the, lower the lower screen. Lower the projector. Lower the projector. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look, they can't do any other business right now. So, like, yeah. they might as well we're all watch Zombies movie. 3 together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Madam anyway. Clerk's going to bailiff gavel, and she's going to say, I call into session Z-O-M-B-I-E-S. <laughs> Three. <laughs> I, I move to watch Zombies 3 on the floor of the house. All those in favor? <laughs> All those? Okay. <clears throat> Finally, uh, Molly, this movie This movie gives me something. Something that I've wanted from every movie we've watched and I feel like yeah. has not really been delivered on until this moment. 
because there is a genuine finale number. Finale. It's a new a song. A number that has not been sung before. Correct. A number that includes mm-hmm. the entire cast. Whole cast. I think the only slight thing I would give against it is that they do play the credits over it. So it's yes. like kind, kind of, of acting as a song. credit song instead yeah, it's of a, a little, finale. It's a little grease too. Yeah, yeah. But it did. It would not. The movie does not feel over until you've watched the song. So I think it is more so credits on top of the finale than it is a credit song. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. I love it for doing this. There was and also I, a I think bit like cast. at the end of the song, they like zoom out to be like, "Yeah, we did it," as if like we filmed Zombies Three. <laughs> Probably like, in the pandemic. <laughs> they're probably like, "All right, wow, we did it," because I couldn't tell if they were like, "Okay, are we like." taking them out now of like are we back in the direct address of like you we celebrated the show like this this feat or was it like yeah end of a great day at filming because they were like clapping and like looking at each other like in their face looked like it was i was staring it was at the a actors call. yes it, it felt curtain. yes it was a yeah. curtain call yeah which maybe we need more of that absolutely every everything that movie musicals can do to seem more like stage shows i'm on board yeah yeah Except not filming the stage version of a musical. Don't do that. Don't do that. There's a very specific way one must do it. And we've, we're spending an entire podcast trying to figure out what it is. So yep. you're welcome. There it is. You're welcome, media um, literacy. That's all I have to say about this movie. I'll take us out on nothing but love. But yeah, that's it. Let's talk about some criticism of this movie from, I don't know, probably coastal elites somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I only found one. There were two reviews. One was New York Times and famously it has a paywall. And I'm not paying the New York Times to read a fucking review. I'm sorry. That's ins- that's fucking insane. I can insane. give you a login next time. Oh, that would help. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I went with Brian Lowry's review from CNN. So I'm going to read a little bit more than I would from one review. Um He says, back in 2018, long before the recent conservative attacks against the studio, Zombies felt energetic and progressive by Disney Channel standards, and the film continues along those lines as one of the aliens represents a non-binary character. Yet as constructed, almost everything here simply feels louder and clunkier, as if throwing more people into the song and dance numbers will compensate for their mediocrity. Clown. This person's a clown. Gesture. The exceptions, not surprisingly, are a reprise of the soulful ballad Someday from the original movie and a new one sung by Donnelly, I'm Finally Me, which conveys underlying feelings of being different and coming to grips with who you really are that resonate in a way little else here does. Disney has been especially adept at mining young stars as it keeps the musical alive through these teen formats built around a colorful mix. Mining oh. young stars would be kind of a different... Hi ho! Built around a colorful mix of music, magic, and broad comedy, but such commodities also come with expiration dates that aren't always easy to pinpoint in advance, but become painfully apparent with the benefit of hindsight. As a case study, look no further than Zombies Three, which might not need to be read its last rites, but at least should schedule an extended rest before anyone starts thinking about bringing the franchise back to life again. Oh, God, that was the correct. That was what I was saying. Was like we need to Just, take a break. Yeah, Congress needs to take a yeah. break. Like zombies. Yeah. Right. The franchise needs to take. a Everyone break. Everyone needs to calm mm. down. Take watch this movie and calm the fuck. I down. mean, look, we didn't watch the first two, so maybe the first two are even better than this. But I heard from I most people that they're I heard, not. I heard but the from third most, one yeah. is the good one. Emily, because yeah. I, I told Emily like we're watching this cold, and she was like, "Honestly, you probably don't need to watch the first two. Watch this one. That's the best." And one. I trust Emily's judgment on everything. So. I, she honestly, she, she's one one for one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect record. Perfect record. She's batting a thousand over there. <laughs> exactly. That's another sports reference, by the way. We don't know about sports over here. And it's, we're breaking stereotypes. We are breaking stereotypes. <laughs> okay. 
I couldn't even. There are so many funny letterbox reviews. Oh, of course. God, yeah, I can't wait. <clears throat> Chloe gave it two stars, and she says, "Of course, the aliens have blue hair and pronouns." <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Therese gave it four and a half stars and said the wig department had a hundred dollars in a vision. <laughs> Jazz gave it two and a half stars and said, and RuPaul, who plays the mothership, he gave everything. <laughs> uh, I Like Turtles 1 gave it two stars and says, I love how Addison really just wants to be a minority. Um, yeah, yeah. Izzy gave it five stars and said, Milo Mannheim is my white boy of the month. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. In, 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 Inigo gave it Inigo. four stars. Inigo. Inigo Montoya. Oh. Inigo, yeah, that makes sense. Inigo gave it four stars and says, this is my multiverse of madness. <laughs> um, <laughs> and this is my favorite one, and then we're done. Uh, Mrs. Dallow Gay gave it two and a half stars and says, when the mom snatched her own wig and solved her internalized speciesism slay. <laughs> <laughs> Not slay! Okay, that's it. See, this is what I mean. This movie is for the people. Although I will say a lot of twos and f- like four and a half to fives. So like. Oh, there's one more. Uh, Katie Katie gave it three stars and says, this is so Riverdale core. And I mean that as a compliment more than anything. And then Matthew said, gave it five stars and said, close encounters of the 12th grade. So <laughs> honestly, the people are doing classic. the Lord's work on Letterboxd. Yeah. This is, yes, this is for the people. It's not for CNN. You should honestly but... stop listening to our podcast and just download the Letterbox. Just app. read Letterboxd. Yeah, what's the point? Beeps. We must move on to our final segment. MVP in closing. So I have thought long and hard about this. You have. And I'm not ready to make an answer. So RJ, who is your MVP? (laughs) Okay. My MVP is going to be Zed, Milo Mannheim. I think there were so many opportunities for him to be like really get on my nerves and like be annoying and like be like Mm. not realistic, like just a caricature. But he was I felt like he was so in the moment that like the him discovering things about his situation in the movie were so genuine and like reactions that I'm like oh like you're you're pretty good at th- like you're really good at like just acting <laughs> so I yeah. was very I was very surprised all of his comedy like worked really well like it was very funny and and I won't explain but he is a very attractive neck oh I literally don't even know what that means. And I won't explain. The Great. entire time I was like, wow, the neck on this this kid. So, he's my MVP. All right. All Molly? Right. Um, I want to say I do really know what you mean, RJ, because I was like, the fact that this guy is playing like a tall, confident white man, and I'm still enjoying it. Yeah, right? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good to, to keep me on your side for that. <laughs> um, I'm going to give it to Terry Who. Um, is that how you say their last name? Probably. Mm-hmm. Aspen. Yeah. Aspen. I thought that their portrayal of an alien just like genuinely not knowing the the fact that it was never a wink at the camera of like yes. aha, I don't get it because I'm an alien. It was just like I really don't know that. Yeah. And I'm so excited to learn about it was yeah. so delightful. And I was like on board for all of Aspen's discoveries and like excited to be in the world for the first time with Aspen. So excellent work. Yeah, I wanted to watch whatever this animated series is. I hope that they just do episodes of like Aspen, like figuring like, oh, what is that would be fun. What is ordering? It's very forky. Food. Yes, it's forky, yeah. forky energy. For but sure. I'm like, I'm up. For, I want to watch a whole series about Aspen just figuring things. Aspen out. was definitely the best alien for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna throw mine to a below the line, and I'm gonna say Trisha Baker who was the costume designer for this film was my MVP mm, because she had to work with a hundred dollars and because she had a hundred dollars and a dream. And a um, no, mostly because I, I liked how the whole movie, because it's toying with the, like, it's a cheap, like it's supposed to look a little cheap to like reference, to be referential to that, like kind of sci-fi m- mode. But still like every character is different and like does it doesn't look like it's like cheap fabric but it looks like overall i don't know how to explain it it's very i think it's like a very hard thing to do to be honest um especially when they did spend like 40 million dollars on this movie so it's not like they didn't they were cheap Mm -hmm. um i just i i i was very impressed by uh the vision for this film from a Mm -hmm. design standpoint so yeah molly what's your closer today 
My closer, what sci-fi creatures would join us at Mountain College for Zombies 4 and what conflict will they bring into the mix? I like that it's specifically at college because I think that brings up new challenges, you know? Right. It's not just going to be like high school, whatever. So we have to... Competition is in a different format in college. It's not like right. cheer competition. It's like... Well, <laughs> well there are cheerleaders. Too. There are, but do you think this is like a, do you think Mountain College, well, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, they would have it. They're in. It's not, a state and, school. Yeah, it's yeah. a state school. Um, Mountain State. Um, I I want to tell the viewers who have, or the listeners who have not seen this movie, that at the very end there is an epilogue. And in it, you, there's a reveal of like vampires are now added to the mix and like mermaids. Did you miss that? I didn't. Watch the epilogue. I didn't know there was one. Oh yeah, it's like after the. It's the, it's it's the after animated the outro. The animated okay. outro. Um, so yeah, so they like do. It's more of the like animation style. So you they reveal that like vampires are now a thing and mermaids are now a thing. So okay. you can still include those if that's your decision. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to tell you. It didn't give that. us lots of information about like no, what no, no. they're gonna bring, right? No, so okay, yeah. we can still okay. The vampires were just sleeping in coffins. So sweet. Mermaids were sunning on a rock. Bef- Classic, I will. I will. I will say before we jump into the closer, my other MVP would have been um, the shrimp. <gasps> mighty shrimp. The mighty shrimp. Mm. That's such a funny joke. That's such a funny joke. It's so. It was a giant shrimp. The tr- mascot was a shrimp. What I mean, it's so. Be proud of who you are. You right. know what I mean. Prawn. And they were like, "We are prawn folk in this in, yeah. this, in this city." But yeah. Um, Molly, do you have an answer for your own question? Well, as I said, I didn't know that vampires were already introduced. I was going to say vampires because mm. I am constantly searching for a new version of vampires to just like mm. wash some twilight out of our mouths and like get a different. Molly, take. do I have the K-pop group for you? Oh, okay. Send me a link after yeah. after the oh, recording. Yes. Um, I think I would like there to be vampires and I would like it to be like, uh, like the vampires are kind of like the cool kids at college. They're very independent and that like Zed or Addison it's very like they hang out with the vampires a lot and it kind of pushes them a little too far out of their comfort zone of like like they try to break too far from their friend group from their childhood and they kind of maybe don't pay mm. as close attention in class as they should and it's like it's like going too far off the deep end to like it's rushing into being an adult and that the mm. lesson is like take your time with this big transition like it's okay still mm-hmm. need some of the yeah. comforts of home you know as you well as you i was gonna answer. say I know it won't make sense because technically this would be the first time monsters are in higher education. But if the yeah. vampires were like Greek life, because like all about order Ooh. and like history and, you know, we decide very inclusive or exclusive. But you know what would be good yeah. too would be if it turned out that vampires have been secretly have going been to college secretly. this whole time. They didn't <sighs> know that they were vampires and that then it's the dynamic of the newly admitted vampire, or, sorry, new admitted, new admitted monsters. monsters and then the monsters who've been working within the system and suppressing <gasps> their identities for a long time. And then how did they interact with people who are like, yeah. wow, no one's going to trap this. Yeah, no, that's great. The, when you were Hire me, Disney. I know when you were describing it, I was like, yeah, they're like old, like long standing, like fraternities and sororities, and it turns out they're all vampires. <gasps> yeah. RJ? Um, yeah, try to beat that. I know. I was just going to say Bigfoots because it's oh, Mountain fun. College. <gasps> that is also really smart. I have no maybe idea what the conflict Pe- is, though. Maybe Big Peter, the townies. The rural they've community. Like, they've yeah. lived. They've lived around there. There's a lot of tension sure, sure, sure. the school. They don't like that they now. Like they're not like monsters, but like yeah, yeah. big feet aren't smart enough apparently to go here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, and then it's about like privilege of like who gets to go to who who gets did to you, go to higher education. Who gets did you access? Notice the testing access? bias line in this movie. The thing about how Zed got he answered well in biology based on how a a zombie brain works but not a human brain and that the teacher was biased in evaluating yes. him and i was like girl are we talking about standardized testing bias right now like what is happening yeah D- yeah they're coming for it it went over my head but now that you say it i understand that that's what it was referring to yeah well i was gonna say like if we continue with i i do like the like privilege and who gets to go to college and then i would do like maybe either like dwarfs or um uh like hobbits or like you know like halflings like okay. maybe it's like that where it's like they've always been like rural but maybe there's also an exceptional maybe they take that story of like there is one exceptional halfling who's like super smart but like can't whatever or like 
there's just more prejudice stacked against them because they're not known mm. to be like smart beings and they're like maybe the only like maybe there's there's a number of zombies and and werewolves and aliens but there's only like the one one hobbit character yes. so it's like and then, they feel very singled out yes and then now it's like tokenism it's like now you represent all mm. of the hobbits like if you everyone have and everyone's get... questioning did you really earn your spot or did they like oh. have to give a spot to a hobbit oh my god the We're universe gonna write a, a ya series here the yeah. other one fully, the fully, other one fully, i just fully, thought fully. of is like um the there's like a group of minotaurs who get like they they get to go to the college because they're like okay well we need like good people on the football team or whatever so they all get like free academic rights scholarships but then it's like but they're not valuing us for our like minds as well blah 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 mm, then just... it's about like valuing valuing like college athletics and what they put mm. like emphasis on. Which or the, the movie, this movie started that conversation with the football scholarship and the exceptional mm -hmm. student scholarship. And yeah, if they do a full zombies for college, uh, so, like side series and it's like a queer story, then it could be like a male mermaid and like something, something about like, okay, mermaids are, you know, a mermaid. mermaid, but like a merman, like, what does that mean? And it's like him discovering what how how he fits in his masculinity and femininity a mermaid that transitions mm. to a merman we don't we can we, we can do anything the universe because the, that's the thing they've opened it up the worlds like, are oyster yeah <laughs> oysters. oysters shrimp the world <laughs> shrimp <laughs> seabrook seabrook no i mean that's the thing because they were able to like not casually but like effortlessly i feel like translate these big issues into this universe mm -hmm. it's like then yeah let's 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 do it let's keep tackling more mm -hmm. yeah let's tear down institutions congress needs to watch zombies three i think that is the <sighs> for sure. our, our main yeah. consensus today so do we recommend absolutely 100 percent. it was great no notes um well uh that's it for us this week uh check back at the end of the month where um we'll be doing another one i will we'll say... have a new episode we might have a congress we might not <laughs> who's to say i will say quick, say quick shout out we did get a review over the break <gasps> Ooh. It's short and sweet. Oh. The best podcast from Professor Duran for all movie musical lovers and for everyone else. This is a must listen to. Five stars. So thanks, Professor. Um, thanks, Prof. Thanks. Thanks, Prof. Um, and then the other thing I would bring up is Dr. that Dr. Duran. Uh, we have a Discord server. There is an act. So we have taken the stance of deleting our Twitter. <laughs> so oh, did uh, we? We Good did. Press. Yes. But we do have a Discord oh, server. Yeah. It was There's... very anti Elon, that's why. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um until he watches Zombies he actually Three. Blocked us. Yeah. yeah. Until we wa until he watches Zombies Three, we're not stepping foot on Twitter. Right. A showcase. And mm -hmm. that's on what? Period. <laughs> So we do have a Discord server. There is a Showgaze channel. So if you are a fan of the show, you want to talk to us, talk to other fans that listen, talk to Brandon if you listen to Top Hat and you want to ask him more about his dance background and other shows at the Ampleverse, you can join the Discord server. The link is on this episode. Also, our email is always open and ready for any conversation that you want to mm -hmm. bring mm -hmm. to about Zombies 3, Gloss Onion, <laughs> anything. Write an email. 2023 is okay. the year of emails. I know emails yeah, had a bad we're reverting. Run. Yes, we're we're reclaiming we're emails. Back. Okay. As I told as I told these two in a group text one time, I was in a coffee shop and the barista who was I'm going to say 21 was telling her friends about buying a new case for her iPod. So we like Gen Z are going to go back on technology. We're going, we're going Absolutely. it's cool to be a little technophobic. Molly, you want to you want to be you want to be uh you want tangible you things you want analog. to touch analog analog what's more yeah, analog absolutely. than clickety clacking on your keyboard on your big a... windows keyboard yeah or yeah, even writing up getting out your pen and quill well thank you emily also and listeners if you have requests if you want us to watch a movie we will we'll... yeah we'll add it to the list we'll add it to the list we'll swap out one of these ones coming up this year that we already have planned <laughs> bye <laughs> bye i wish i could sing you off i wish i could I... sing a song but i can't i'm sorry Sing me a black pink song. Whip it, whip it, whip it, whip it, whip it, whip it, It's black and it's pink till the shutdown. Perfect. Goodbye. 
Thank you for listening to the best revival of a podcast, Showgaze. You can find us on social media. Adam is at Adam Noecker on Twitter. RJ is at RJ Food Rocks on Instagram. And Molly is at Molly Matiny on Instagram. This episode was edited and mixed by Adam Noecker. This has been an Ampliverse production. You can find our show page and more information at theampliverse.com. If you'd like to send us your own takes on the movie we just watched, reach out to us via email and we might read it aloud on the show. Our email is showgazemoviemusical at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your podcasts. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to help others find the show. And now, as always, the show must go on. So stick around to hear what we're going to be watching next episode. I do not remember anything, except that you are my servant. No, Your Majesty, that is not true. I am most certainly not your servant. Your Majesty, I beg of you, don't take revenge on this girl. This girl hurt your vanity, that is all. She didn't hurt your heart. You have no heart. Discovering Voices, Building Worlds, The Ampliverse.